Welcome to Fanfiction Audiobook. Marvel's Strongest Pupil Technique. Chapter 81. Mr. Jones. Hearing what Jones said, Stern rolled his eyes and said loudly, The whole American people know about your relationship with Tony Stark. I don't think you can represent the American people. I never said I wanted to represent the American people. Hearing Stern's words, Jones said without hesitation, I'm just representing Tony's position now, and I want to know, if Tony handed over his steel armor, so where would it be applied? Taking a deep breath, Jones continued, how much steel armor will appear, and which unit will it be applied to? To which battlefield? Mr. Stern, if you haven't thought about this question yet, let me ask you, will it be used by the fire brigade or the police force? The site reminds you that the cost of each pair of steel armor is 250 million more than a dollar. Hearing what Jones said, the corner of Stern's mouth twitched, and he couldn't help falling into a moment of silence. After a long while, Stern shook his head lightly, and said, Actually, the fire department and the police system are still unable to buy equipment at this price. In other words, they are in the hands of the U.S. government and cannot be used to rescue the people and fight criminals. The corner of his mouth raised, and Jones' eyes flashed, and he continued, then, will they use Ali to fight terrorists, to prevent some unnecessary wars? Definitely. Hearing what Jones said, Stern's eyes lit up, and he immediately said, the U.S. military and government have always spared no effort in attacking terrorists, and the U.S. has been working hard for world peace. But Mr. Tony is doing this. As soon as Stern's voice fell, Jones directly interfaced, and the results are not bad. In the past month or so, the activity of some terrorists in the Middle East has plummeted. At the same time, Tony Mr. T has organized two battles with more than 200 people. Quickly saying these words, Jones turned and looked at the group of reporters behind, as Mr. Stern said, the U.S. government is not willing to use the taxes paid by the American people to build steel armor for the benefit of the people. Instead, it tries to inserting a thing that is already being done, I have to wonder if they are trying to get something for themselves in these fights instead of fighting for the American people. Mr. Jones. Hearing Jones' words, Stern's expression froze, and sweat broke out on his forehead. If these words were publicized and recognized by the public, then he would not even think about leading up. I admit that what you said is very reasonable, but you must know that the world is too big for Mr. Tony Stark to take care of everything. We can create more steel armor. Every corner of the cheap world. So you mean you want to start World War III? Staring straight at Stern, Jones at the moment's eyes can be said to be extremely sharp, take care of every corner of the world. Mr. Stern, the United States is not an imperialist country, and other countries in the world are not dependent countries of the United States. Take care of every country in the world. Do you want to stir up the fear and anger of all countries in the world against the United States? Quote. Jones. You're taking it out of context. I never meant it like that. Hearing what Jones said, Stern's eyes were almost red. He never meant it like that, but why did his words come to Jones? After reading it out, does it become like this? Staring straight at Jones, Stern couldn't help shouting, Listen, Mr. Jones, the United States is not an imperialist country, every action of the military will get the consent of the people. The meaning of what I just said is also just to be able to organize unnecessary wars in the world, not to violate the sovereignty of other countries. Really. Jones twitched his mouth when he heard Stern's words, and said directly, if the American citizens in front of the TV believe what he said, then I will pretend that I never said it before. That's right. After the words fell, Jones suddenly seemed to think of something, and continued, if I remember correctly, this military meeting did not solicit the opinions of any American citizens, but you used the name of American citizens to ask Mr. Stark to hand over his steel armor. As Jones' voice fell, the scene of the meeting became lively in an instant, and all the reporters, cameras were aimed at Jones and Stern on the stage. Whether it was a reporter or an official attending the meeting, they couldn't help looking at Jones with admiration. What Jones said today can be said to be heartbreaking, and every sentence seems to be like a steel knife stabbing fiercely in Stern's chest. Compared with Jones' words, Stern's refutation and explanation are so weak. Especially the last few words. Doing what you want to do in the name of the people, the U.S. government does not have much responsibility for this kind of thing. 
But, if this kind of thing is brought up to the bright side, it's not so easy to say. If there are no accidents, after today, Starn will probably step down from the position of Member of Parliament. And Stern himself is obviously very aware of this matter, looking at the smiling Jones below, Stern can't wait to rush down and eat him alive. No, we can't continue discussing this kind of thing. Today we must force Tony Stark to hand over the steel armor technology. Thoughts flashed through his mind, and Stern turned his gaze directly to Tony who was on the side. If he wanted to hold on to his position, the only way he could force Tony to hand over his steel armor was to go. If he succeeded, then the people above might see that he could keep himself because of his own merits. Thinking of this, Stern's eyes flashed, and the expression on his face became a little calmer. Quiet. After knocking the gavel in his hand, Stern said loudly, Listen, I'm not an expert, and I can't make an assessment on some things, but we have invited a weapon expert. I subpoenaed Justin Hammer. As Stern's voice fell, Justin Hammer, who had been impatient for a long time, also walked directly to Tony's side. Looking sideways at Hammer, Tony twitched the corner of his mouth, and a look of disdain could not help but appear on his face. Both Stark Industries and Hammer Industries are giants in arms, and he has also dealt with Justin Hammer a lot. For Tony, Hammer only knows how to plot power and trick people, and he doesn't understand technology at all. To you, you never regarded him as an opponent of the same level. Watching Hammer sit aside, Tony sneered and said directly, Oh. I saw Mr. Hammer, but I don't know when Mr. Hammer became, a weapon expert. Hearing Tony's obviously mocking words, Hammer didn't care. He had suffered a lot from Tony, so how could he care about such a trivial matter? With a dry laugh, Hammer said directly, Hee hee, you are right, I am not a weapon expert, you are, you are a genius, Tony. However, AGFG, we all know that steel armor is not a child's toy, it has the ability to change the pattern of the world. Quote. Having said that, Hammer directly picked up the microphone in front of him, turned around and looked at the group of reporters behind, and said loudly, Steel armor is a lion that will always bite at any time. Our purpose of coming here is very clear. This paragraph time, Tony Stark created a brand new weapon, and for so many reasons, he just called it a protective armor. After a slight pause, Hammer turned his attention directly to Tony's face, his eyes were full of provocation, he wants us to trust him, wants us to hide behind him. Oh. I really hope I feel safe. Dot dot dot. But I ask everyone not to forget, the terrorist incident that caused a lot of noise at the beginning. Their weapons are all printed with the Stark Industry label. Although Tony said it was made by Obadiah, but we don't know what the truth is. Now, Tony has manufactured stronger weapons, and Stark Industries has a greater ability, what they will do in the future, we don't even know. After the words fell, Hammer nodded directly to the reporters behind, then walked to Tony and sat down. And Hammer was obviously very satisfied with his speech-like speech just now, and when he sat down again, he looked at Tony next to him with a provocative look. Moreover, not only Hammer, even Stern on the stage couldn't help showing a look of satisfaction. Stern glanced over the faces of Tony and Jones inadvertently, and Stern said loudly, Well said, Mr. Hammer, let's invite Lieutenant Colonel James Rhodes to attend the meeting. Roddy. Hearing Stern's words, Tony couldn't help being stunned. The relationship between Tony and Roddy has always been very good, but when Stern invited him in at this time, it was obvious that Roddy would not come to help him. This made Tony couldn't help showing a look of astonishment on his face, and subconsciously turned his head and looked back. However, just as Tony turned his head, he saw Joan's face. Calm down. Lightly patting Tony on the shoulder, Jones said directly, it's all about psychological tactics. Lieutenant Colonel Roddy must have been tricked too, so don't worry about it. N. Hearing Jones' words, Tony was stunned for a moment, but he quickly reflected and nodded lightly. With a smile on Tony's face, he got up and rushed towards Roddy. After a few short conversations, Tony sat back in his seat again, and Roddy went directly to Tony's side. Okay. Lieutenant Colonel Rhodes should also bring the complete report he collected on the steel armor weapon. Lieutenant Colonel, please read the fourth paragraph on page 57. You want me to read a specific paragraph in the report. Hearing Stern's words, Rhodes' eyes widened, and a look of surprise appeared on his face, 
I thought I was here to give a complete and detailed report. Quote. I understand. A smile appeared on his face, and Stern said directly, but there are many variables today. Read that paragraph. Okay. Eddie nodded slightly, and said helplessly, but that doesn't mean my complete report. Then don't read it out. Snatching the document that Roddy brought into his hand, Joan's eyes were full of mockery. What's the use of reading out the report out of context? Quote exclamation mark exclamation mark exclamation mark quote. Seeing Joan's actions, everyone present couldn't help but be surprised. This is the scene of a military committee meeting. All citizens in the United States and even some people from abroad are watching them, and Jones unexpectedly forcibly interrupting Lieutenant Colonel Roddy's report. Hey, Jones, what are you doing? Roddy and Jones also knew each other. At the moment, seeing Jones' actions, Roddy was also surprised, and couldn't help but whispered, hurry up, it's not a joke. For play. I know this is no joke. Throwing Roddy's report to the side of Tony, Jones turned his eyes to Stern in front of him like the corner of his mouth. Stern Hospital just said that I took it out of context, I never thought that I would do the same thing now. Don't you feel ashamed to do this in front of the people of the entire United States? Jones. Hearing what Jones said, Stern blushed and couldn't help shouting, this is the military committee. What do you want to do? Don't be nervous, I don't mean to disturb the meeting. Hearing Stern's words, Jones raised the corner of his mouth and said directly, I just want to make another report before Lieutenant Colonel Roddy. Give a report before Lieutenant Colonel Roddy. Hearing what Jones said, everyone present was stunned for a moment, with a look of doubt on their faces, and they immediately began to whisper. Regardless of the somewhat chaotic scene, Jones turned his gaze and looked directly at a screen with huge amounts of computers in the venue. Tony. With a light shout, a playful look appeared on Jones' face. Tesson has been targeting Tony for so long, why is it possible that Jones didn't fight back? Leaving aside the actual situation, the biggest characteristic of the United States is but its freedom of speech. Especially since Jones still has the identity of a reporter. Learn. Like Jones, Tony didn't have much affection for people like Tessian, so he responded loudly, and Tony took out his mobile phone and pointed it at the computer screen. Okay. Now, I'm in control of your computer, now, let's turn it on first. With Tony's voice, the computer's screen began to light up. A few seconds later, the computer was successfully turned on, and a video player software started running immediately. Okay. Everyone, now please point your eyes and cameras at the computer screen. With a smug look on his face, Tony started to play the video directly on the screen. There are two videos played by Tony, one is the video of Hulk fighting against General Ross at Carlford University, and the other, is the scene of the battle between Hulk and Hulk on the streets of Manhattan. Compared with the first video, the picture in the second video is undoubtedly much clearer and almost all the scenes from the appearance of the evil spirit to the end of the battle are included in it. Ten minutes later, the two videos were played, and everyone in the field fell into silence. Everyone, the incidents in these two videos took place within a week, and the second video took place the night before yesterday. And these two incidents have been published in the newspapers, I think everyone is very clear about it. Having said that, Jones paused slightly, glanced at the faces of everyone present, and continued to speak. Perhaps you will be very puzzled, today we are talking about Tony's steel armor, why did we play the video of the Green Titan incident? Immediately, I will give you an answer. After the words fell, Jones turned his head to look at Tony, and nodded slightly. Seeing Jones' actions, Tony frowned, and played a video on the screen again. This time the video is a scene of Jones wearing steel armor and fighting Hulk, but this time the video is cut, and there are only a few simple pictures in it. 1. Jones fired a palm cannon at Hulk, posing no threat to Hulk. Then, it was Hulk who grabbed the parts of the car and fell on Jones, knocking Jones to the ground. And then, it was Hulk who quickly rushed to Jones, and punched Jones with a fist. Then, the video is over. Turning his gaze to a group of reporters again, Jones frowned, and said directly, you all obviously saw the scene just now, the battle between the green titan and the steel armor, I was inside that steel armor, and the performance of the steel armor it is exactly the same as Tony's. In front of the green titan, the steel armor has no resistance ability at all. And that green titan is the product of military research. 
The military restarted the Super Soldier Project 70 years ago, trying to replicate the original American Captain Steve Rogers. Then, they succeeded. But, here but there were some surprises. Pushing aside a soldier who was trying to stop him, Jones walked directly to the front of the screen, pointed at Hulk and said loudly, this is a scientist in the Super Soldier Project, but the military deceived him and told him, what he did, was just a radiation resistance experiment. So, this scientist used himself to conduct the experiment and it turned out like this and the military is still looking for him. Mr. Jones. Hearing what Jones said, a reporter behind him suddenly stood up and said loudly, may I take the liberty to ask, how did you know these things, and how did you fight the Green Titan? Besides, Manhattan in the battle, who is the other blue-gray titan? You ask so many questions all at once, and I don't even know how to answer them. Hearing the reporter's question, Jones narrowed his eyes and gave him 10,000 likes in his heart. This assist is really good. A bright smile appeared on his face, and Jones said indifferently, then I will answer your question backwards. First of all, this blue-gray titan. His name is Bronsky, he is from the military, and he is fine. 650, British Special Forces, responsible for the capture of the Green Titan. But in my opinion, this guy is more like a villain. With a sneer, Jones continued, as for why I got into a fight with the Green Titan, it's also very simple. I work in a, well, a secret agent unit of the government. Then they gave me tasks, and I did them, and then just start fighting. As for why I know these things, it is also because of the unit I work for, since I am doing a mission, I must have some information about the target person. Then can you tell us, what department are you working in? Why were you sent to perform such a task? After hearing Jones' answer, the reporter who asked the question just opened his mouth and played a perfect assist again. It's said to be a secret government agency department. Then I definitely can't say it. The corner of his mouth raised, Jones directly reached out and took out a certificate from his pocket, and handed it to Roddy who was not far in front, but I think Roddy the lieutenant colonel has the authority to know, so let lieutenant colonel Roddy verify the authenticity of my certificate. Jones. Staring straight at Jones in front of him, the expression on Roddy's face can be said to be extremely tangled, Jones interrupted him just now, Roddy thought he could get out of this time, but Jones did not expect lead to him again. Staring at the attention of countless reporters behind him and Stern's fiery gaze on the stage, Roddy took Jones's ID in his hands with extreme discomfort. And when he turned his gaze to Jones' ID, Roddy's pupils couldn't help shrinking. Shield. Looking up at Jones suddenly, Roddy's eyes were full of surprise, you actually joined Shield. Hush. Hearing Roddy's words, Jones raised the corner of his mouth and said softly, keep your voice down, Shield is not an open organization. Lieutenant Colonel Roddy, just check the authenticity of your documents. Okay. Nodding slightly, Roddy lowered his head slightly, and put his eyes on the certificate in his hand again. Ten seconds later, Roddy directly handed the certificate in his hand to Jones, and said loudly, I use my reputation to guarantee that the certificate in the hands of Mr. Jones is absolutely real. And this department also has the authority to send people to intervene in Green Titan's event. Hearing Roddy's words, all the reporters at the scene fell into an uproar instantly. All the reporters couldn't help standing up, and all the cameras and microphones in their hands were aimed at Jones. Everyone. Seeing the appearance of the reporters, Jones raised his arms and shouted directly, You have all seen that compared to the steel armor, the strength of the Green Titan is undoubtedly much stronger, and it is also it is in the hands of the military. But compared to what they have done, you have all seen it. With such a performance, how can Mr. Tony feel relieved to hand over the technology of the steel armor to them. The meeting is over. Everyone, all leave. Seeing the situation develop to such an extent, Stern at the moment on the stage was already sweating profusely, and gave Jones a resentful look. Stern couldn't help shouting, Jones, your current behavior is leaking secrets. Do you know the nature of your behavior? As I said, I am just a part-time employee in that department. In fact, my real identity is a reporter. I have the right to let the American people know the truth they should know. Especially the people who died in the battle in Manhattan. Facing Stern's sight, Jones's face was full of indifference, but the surrounding reporters had already left the scene under the sway of the surrounding soldiers. 
Seeing Stern's livid face after hearing what he said, Jones raised the corner of his mouth and called Tony to go outside. Ten minutes later, in Tony's car. Slowly starting the car, Tony turned his head to look at Jones with surprise in his eyes from time to time. Jones, I have to admire, your eloquence is really. I don't even know how to describe it. I admire it you. I just know that 1.5 is more. Hearing Tony's words, Jones raised the corner of his mouth and said directly, if this incident continues today, you basically don't have to worry about the government using the public's fishing boat pressure to force you. Moreover, they won't be able to do anything to you in a short time. This mess, is not easy to deal with. N. Nodding lightly, Tony's face was full of approval, but it didn't take long before Tony's face became serious, and a worried look appeared on his face, but. If you do this, you will be on the cusp of the limelight. It's okay. Hearing Tony's words, Jones narrowed his eyes, with an inexplicable smile on his face, that's what I planned from the beginning. What do you mean? Hearing what Jones said, Tony was stunned for a moment, with a puzzled look on his face. Shield. With a gleam in his eyes, Jones said in a low voice, when I joined them, I said that I would only help them with missions without any compensation. However, Nick Fury didn't think about it, how could there be such a thing in the world? Good thing. Hearing what Jones said, the corner of Tony's mouth twitched while he was driving, and a look of helplessness appeared on his face, so you exposed S-H-I-E-L-D's identity before, just to take advantage of them. Well, definitely nodded, Jones couldn't help but think of the second request he made to S.H.I.E.L.D. back then, and then raised the corner of his mouth, and said softly, it's just a test, I really want to use S.H.I.E.L.D. The things you can do with your identity are much bigger than this. Point zero six much bigger than this. Hearing Jones' words, Tony couldn't help but feel a chill running down his back. This guy, what the hell is he trying to do? At this moment, Jones' phone rang suddenly in the car. Reaching out his hand and taking out his mobile phone, seeing the phone number on it, Jones couldn't help chuckling. Shield, S response is quite fast, so call me now. Hearing what Jones said, Tony rolled his eyes, and couldn't help showing a smile on his face. I guess they're going to fire you. Who knows? Muttering softly, Jones connected the phone directly. Hey, Director Nick, how are you? I'm bad. Even over the phone, Jones could clearly hear the anger in Nick's words. Jones, do you know what you're doing? Director Nick, I still want to ask. Hearing Nick's words, Jones narrowed his eyes, and instead of answering Nick's words, he began to ask, what kind of organization is S.H.I.E.L.D.? Is it just? Um. Hearing what Jones said, Nick couldn't help being stunned. Why do you ask such a question? S.H.I.E.L.D. is an organization that acts for the safety of the United States and the safety of the American people. Definitely is justice. But why don't I think so? Hearing Nick's words, Jones' eyes turned cold, and he said directly, Banner is just a scientist. The military used him to conduct research, and they didn't tell him the truth about the research. They wanted him after the accident and make a monster like Brisky. You sent me to catch Banner why don't I see any justice in it? Quote. You. Hearing Jones' words, Nick's pupils shrank, and he had the idea of crawling over the phone to tear Jones up. Jones, don't pretend to be crazy. Roared loudly, and Nick couldn't help shouting, you are not as righteous as you said. You know the reason for arresting Banner. Really. Hearing Nick's words, Jones narrowed his eyes and didn't care at all but I'm a reporter, and I have the right and obligation to let the American people know the truth about anything. You're just an entertainment reporter. Hearing Jones's words, Nick's nose was almost crooked, and you won't be any more soon. I guarantee that the Daily Bugle will fire you soon. I knew that S.H.I.E.L.D. is not a just place, and it even used its power to make people lose their jobs. Hearing Nick's words, Jones' eyes flashed, and he said directly, Nick Fury, I want to resign. S-H-I-E-L-D's temporary job. I quit, I don't want to let myself get into such a filthy organization. Jones. Hearing what Jones said, Nick on the other end of the phone couldn't help but snapped, I can guarantee that you will be arrested for leaking state secrets the moment you leave S.H.I.E.L.D. That is to say, if I don't resign, I'll be fine, right? Hearing Nick's words, Jones changed the topic, and a smile rose on his face instantly. It seems that Nick Fury still has a high tolerance for himself, 
877 caused such a big mess just now, and Nick can still suppress it. But, this shouldn't be a strange thing. When he was fighting Hulk, Jones had already exposed some abilities, such as, blurring, for example, heat rays. Although S.H.I.E.L.D. may not know the specific data of Jones' ability for the time being, but Jones with other super abilities is obviously much heavier than the present who only has a pair of steel armor. Even at a price, S.H.I.E.L.D. is willing to win Jones over. Thoughts flashed through his mind, Jones laughed and said directly, in this case, I won't resign. Goodbye Director Nick. Wait a minute. Hearing what Jones said, Nick said directly and loudly, although I won't pursue your previous affairs for the time being, but don't think about just forgetting about it. Get ready and go out to carry out the mission in two days. The voice fell, and Nick hung up the phone without waiting for Jones to speak. Glancing sideways at Jones with a somewhat stiff face, Tony smiled and said directly, Jones. It seems that the conversation is very pleasant. Yeah, very happy. Hearing Tony's words, the corner of Jones' mouth twitched, and he put the mobile phone aside casually. Jones said helplessly, that Nick Fury said he was going to get the Daily Bugle to fire me. Tony, I am about to lose my job. E.H. Hearing Jones' words, Tony's face froze, and he didn't know what to say for a moment. After a moment of silence, Tony said helplessly, I said, it's just a reporter's job. As for that, I want you to quit it a long time ago. You don't understand. Hearing Tony's words, Jones shook his head lightly, and said calmly, don't you think so? Just like I did just now, tell some secrets that many people don't know, and then shout, I as a reporter, I have the responsibility to let the public know the truth of the matter. How cool. Boring thoughts. Hearing Jones' words, Tony rolled his eyes, stepped on the accelerator, and the car picked up speed instantly and began to wait on the road at high speed. More than three days later, in the permafrost inside the Arctic Circle. Agent Coulson. Staring straight at Phil Coulson, who was wearing a thick padded coat and driving, Jones' expression was extremely ugly, such a simple task. I think you can do it by yourself, why does that Nick guy still send me to such a ghost place? Jones. This is no small matter. Seeing the looming red light in front of him, Cole slowly controlled the car to slow down, and at the same time said, we are not sure what kind of danger there will be, and you were in the military when those words were published on the committee, we just received the notice here, and the main purpose of bringing you this time is actually to make you disappear from the sight of some people for a while. Really. Hearing Phil Coulson's words, Jones curled his lips in disdain, and said directly, let me disappear and I can honestly hide it. There's no need for me to come out and carry out my appointment. Hearing what Jones said, Phil Coulson chuckled and said softly, to be honest, no one here thinks that you will take it honestly. As he spoke, Phil Coulson stepped on the brakes and stopped the car directly. Okay. Get out of the car, we've arrived at our destination. I know. Nodding slightly, Jones glanced straight ahead, but couldn't help showing a look of amazement on his face. On the thick layer of ice, an iron sheet similar to the shape of an airplane wing protrudes directly from the ground, which was nothing at all. But through the observation of the clairvoyant, Jones can easily see the huge enlightenment hidden under the wing. This. With a sigh, Jones didn't know how to describe it for a moment. He knew that this was a sea della plane during World War II, and it was more than 70 years ago. However, even so, the sense of technology of this plane is still overwhelming even much stronger than most of the current planes, and it is definitely a product of black technology. This is the goal of our mission. Stepping up to Jones, Phil Coulson couldn't help but get annoyed and earnestly looking at the exposed wing in front of him. According to our estimation, it should be the original the plane that Captain America was flying when he went down. I know, you don't need to say it again. Hearing what Phil Coulson said, Jones rolled his eyes and walked straight forward, it's said in the mission information. Okay. Hearing what Jones said, Phil Coulson smiled awkwardly, and followed Jones's pace directly, speaking of which, I'm still a fan of Captain America. So it's inevitable that I will be a little excited. Agent Phil Coulson, fanatical fanaticism is not good. With a look of persuasion on his face, Jones shook his head and walked forward. You. Seeing Jones' appearance, Phil Coulson was taken aback for a moment, and couldn't help showing a wry smile on his face. Jones felt so like an elder persuading a child. 
Shaking his head lightly, Phil Coulson decisively put this idea out of his mind, and caught up with Jones in two or three steps. Agent Phil Coulson. As soon as he came to Jones, before Phil Coulson had time to say anything, Jones said directly, can I ask why you haven't started to act yet? I don't think you brought the laser cutting machine. Ching, Wangs, shook his head slightly, and Phil Coulson said helplessly, we can't act rashly. According to the intelligence at the time, this fighter jet was equipped with many nuclear warheads. Captain America also drove here to prevent these warheads from exploding. Of. Really. Hearing what Phil Coulson said, Jones nodded slightly, with an extremely calm expression on his face. Stepping lightly on the ice under his feet, Jones said directly, then listen to me and get the cutting machine. Forget it, don't do it, it's too much trouble. Let me do it. What? Hearing Jones' words, Phil Coulson was taken aback for a moment, but before he could react, he saw two red rays shooting out from Jones' eyes, directly hitting the ice below. Hey! Seeing Jones' actions, Phil Coulson couldn't help trembling. Jones, what are you doing? I just said that this plane has nuclear warheads in it. I know. Just rest assured. Hearing Phil Coulson's words, Jones responded, but he didn't stop at all, and melted the thick ice in a short time. I'm sure, there is absolutely no nuclear warhead in this underground. But, hearing what Jones said, Phil Coulson was taken aback, but there was still a trace of anxiety on his face. But, even if there is no nuclear warhead, it would be very troublesome if you accidentally injured Captain America's body. Corpse. Hearing what Phil Coulson said, Jones frowned, and an inexplicable smile suddenly appeared on his face. Detective Phil Coulson, I hope you will wait a while, don't be scared. What do you mean? Hearing what Jones said, Phil Coulson couldn't help showing a puzzled look on his face. You'll know soon. Murmured softly, and the aircraft bulkhead where Jones' heat rays hit had already melted a hole. Seeing this scene, Jones' eyes lit up, and a look of excitement appeared on his face. Once part of it melts, the rest is easy to handle. Following the edge that was almost melted, Jones soon melted a big hole in the cabin wall of the plane. Looking down at the gray cabin under the ground, Jones raised the corner of his mouth, turned his head to look at Phil Coulson at the side, and said softly, Detective Phil Coulson, how are you? Are you interested in going down to take a look? Yes. Hearing what Jones said, Phil Coulson responded without any hesitation, then turned his head to look at a soldier beside him, and said loudly, prepare the rope for me. So what's the trouble? Hearing what Phil Coulson said, Jones let out a soft drink, and jumped straight into the big hole under his feet. Hey, Jones. Wait for me. Seeing Jones' movements, Phil Coulson couldn't help shouting, trying to stop Jones who had already entered the plane. But Jones didn't have the patience to wait for Phil Coulson to slowly slide down from the top, the corner of his mouth twitched, and Jones walked directly to the place where Steve was frozen. Ten seconds later, Jones directly used heat rays to melt all the snow in the control room, revealing the hidden ice cubes below. At this time, Phil Coulson also stepped up to Jones' side. Following Jones' gaze forward, Phil Coulson's pupils shrank, and a horrified look appeared on his face. This, this is. Hurry up and call someone down. With a twist of his mouth, a mysterious smile appeared on Jones' face, and he said softly, he's not dead yet. Two days later, near Times Square in New York, a branch base of S.H.I.E.L.D. He stared straight at the monitor in front of him. After a while, Jones suddenly sighed softly, turned his head to look at Nick Fury, and couldn't help but said, I said can I refuse that task, Agak? No. Hearing what Jones said, Nick on the side didn't even turn his head, and said directly, you have provoked people from the military before, if you are dishonest, I can't guarantee that they won't treat you what are you doing? Okay, okay. Hearing Nick's words, Jones twitched his mouth and said helplessly, isn't it just to help Captain America adapt to modern society? I hope this ice cube is not as stubborn as I thought, otherwise I might not be able to bear it. Just beat him up. Hearing Jones' words, the corner of Nick's mouth twitched, and a hint of helplessness appeared on his face. He and Captain America existed at the same time. Back then, he admired Captain America very much. Hearing Jones' words, Nick couldn't help but feel want to defend Captain America a few words. However, before Nick could speak, Jones shouted, Nick. He's awake. What? Hearing Jones' words, Nick was stunned for a moment, 
and instantly turned his gaze to the top of the monitor. I saw that the picture on the monitor was a hospital in the style of the 1930s and 1940s, and Captain America, Steve Rogers was the center of the picture, attracting the attention of Jones and Nick to him. At the moment, Steve had slowly sat up from the hospital bed, turned his head and glanced at the surrounding scene, Steve's face was full of doubts. When a reaching out and grabbing the walkie-talkie beside him, Nick yelled softly, Captain America is awake, it's time for you to appear. Yes. As Nick's voice fell, the first day happened directly from the walkie-talkie. The next moment, the room in the ward on the monitor was directly pushed away, and a beautiful woman who was also dressed in the 1930s and 1940s also stepped into the room. I bet the big ice cube will find something abnormal. Jones turned his head and looked at Nick aside, and said directly, if such a simple decoration can fool him, then he really doesn't deserve to be the number one in history. A superhero. Hearing what Jones said, the corner of Nick's mouth twitched, and just about to refute Jones, he heard Steve's words, where am I now? It looks like he's about to start running away. Turning his head to look at Nick, Jones had a smile on his face. Didn't you ask me to help him adapt to society, then I'll fight this big ice cube say hello. After the words fell, Jones turned around and walked outside. From the moment Nick entrusted that task to himself, Jones had the idea of wanting to fight Captain America. What Jones is best at is the ability of the eyes, but this does not mean that Jones' physical fitness is weak. In fact, even if he does not use chakra to boost himself, Jones' physical fitness is several times that of ordinary people. And once he uses chakra to boost himself, Jones is even sure to dismantle Tony's steel armor with his bare hands. But, with such a strong physical fitness, Jones has never practiced any fighting skills. Unlike Jones, Steve is good at all kinds of martial arts, and can perfect them to the extreme at the same time. He is recognized as one of the strongest melee masters among many superheroes. If Jones can learn his combat skills, he can definitely greatly enhance his close combat ability. Soon, Jones was standing outside the shed where Steve was. At the moment, there were two fully armed agents standing outside the door of the shed. Like Wena, they were here, ready to wait for Steve to wake up at any time. Gently nodding to the two of them, Jones walked directly to the door, turned his head and looked inside. At the moment, Steve was staring straight at the female agent named Wen Na, with a serious look on his face, let me ask you again, where am I now? While speaking, Steve also jumped directly from the hospital bed standing up, she walked towards Wen Na's direction step by step. Captain Rogers. Don't get excited. Quietly looking at Steve in front of her, Wen Na quietly pressed the alarm in her hand. And the moment Wen Na pressed the alarm, the two fully armed agents at the door turned around instantly, ready to walk inside. I'll go. Stretching out his hand to hold down the two agents next to him, Jones didn't wait for their answer, he just opened the door and walked in. Quote exclamation mark exclamation mark exclamation mark quote. Seeing Jones walking into the room in casual clothes, Steve couldn't help being taken aback, and a look of vigilance instantly appeared on his face, but it may be because he didn't see a weapon from Jones, Steve didn't do anything excited action, just squinted his eyes, and said loudly, who are you? You can call me Jones. Quietly glanced at Steve, Jones raised the corner of his mouth, and said directly, I brought you back from the Arctic Circle, Big Ice Cube. Arctic Circle. Ice Cubes. Hearing what Jones said, Steve was stunned for a moment, with a puzzled look on his face, and he was about to ask something. But, at this moment, Steve suddenly left two fully armed agents outside the door. The pupils shrank instantly, Steve rushed towards Jones without any hesitation. Quote exclamation mark exclamation mark. This guy. Seeing Steve's movements, Jones' eyeballs moved, Sanguyu's Sharingan instantly opened, and Steve's movements slowed down a lot in Jones' eyes. But, my own speed is a bit slow. Jones turned back when the three hooks turned around, and dodged to the right. At the same time, Jones moved his left arm and threw a simple uppercut at Steve. The next moment, there was a muffled sound of flesh colliding, and Jones' punch hit Steve's face without hindrance, knocking his whole body into the air and smashing him hard onto the hospital bed behind. One blow sent Steve flying, but Jones didn't have any smug look on his face. Steve has been frozen for 70 years, and his physical activity and reaction speed are far inferior to those at his peak. 
Although Jones has never practiced any fighting skills, nor has he used chakra to enhance his speed and power, but with Sharingan's insight and physical fitness several times that of ordinary people, it is not something to be proud of directly hitting Steve. Point zero zero. And Captain America is Captain America after all, quickly turned over from the bed and fell down, Steve clenched his fists in front of his chest, looked at Jones with a look of vigilance. The next moment, Steve rushed out from the spot again, and punched out a straight punch, piercing Jones' chest like a long sword. The speed is even faster than before. Did you recover so quickly? You deserve to be the most perfect super soldier serum injector. A thought flashed through his mind, and Jones also punched out, directly facing Steve's fist. Jones doesn't know any martial arts skills, but with the super strength of Sharingan, Jones can still accurately smash Steve's fist with his fist. Just in the blink of an eye, the fists of the two collided together, making a silent sound. You. Looking at Jones in surprise, Steve from at the moment had a look of shock on his face, how could you? Could it be that you also injected super soldier serum? Maruyama. Definitely not. Hearing Steve's words, Jones twitched the corner of his mouth, and said directly, Steve Rogers. You are still the only super soldier serum injector in this world. Where the hell is this place? Probably because he didn't feel any malice from Jones, after two moves, Steve didn't continue to attack Jones, but asked. Want to know? Steve wanted to stop and figure out the situation, but Jones didn't have that interest anymore, the corner of his mouth raised, and Jones said directly, then come and beat me. If you win, I'll tell you yours. As soon as the voice fell, Jones made a, eight or seven, step, and rushed directly towards Steve. Hiss. Seeing Jones' movements, Steve couldn't help but gasped, and a serious look appeared on his face. Before that, Jones was not weaker than him in terms of strength, but now it seems that the speed the same is true. And Jones also said that he hadn't been injected with super soldier serum, how could this not surprise Steve? But Jones didn't give Rogers any time to be surprised. After taking two simple steps, Jones jumped up instantly, and rushed towards Steve ferociously. Although he didn't have any strength skills, but with his strong physical fitness, Jones managed to save more than 5 meters in this leap. His right fist was aimed directly at Steve's face. This has gone far beyond the limits of the common people. Jones' movements were extremely fast. If it was an ordinary person, they would probably stay on the spot when they saw Jones pounce. However, Jones' opponent is Steve Rogers. Seeing Jones' action, Steve was not surprised but delighted, quickly squatted down, and directly hit Jones' stomach with an uppercut. Quote exclamation mark exclamation mark. Careless. Trying to twist his body in midair, Jones couldn't help showing a hint of helplessness in his eyes. He was still careless. Facing a fighter like Steve, every flaw would become his target of attack. Jones rashly jumped up to attack Steve. Although he could greatly improve the strength of his fist, he also sold Steve a whole, huge amounts of flaws. There was a hint of cruelty in his eyes, Jones' abdominal muscles tightened, and he was ready to resist Steve's attack. How strong is Steve's strength? Jones doesn't know the specific data, but one punch is definitely beyond the power of a thousand caddies. As Steve punched his stomach, Jones only felt a sharp pain spread directly from his stomach, and at the same time, his whole body was pushed into the air by this force. And this is not over yet, eyes staring straight at Jones in the sky, Steve clenched his fist with his right hand, the muscles on his arm exploded as if he wanted to burst his clothes. Not good. Seeing this scene, Jones' pupils shrank, and he couldn't help being shocked. He couldn't use his strength in midair now. Once he fell, he would definitely be greeted by a stormy attack from Steve. At that time, if Jones does not use special abilities such as blurring, it will definitely be a losing situation. Thinking of this, Jones didn't have any hesitation, resisted the pain in his lower abdomen, directly used his strong waist to turn his body around, and stepped on Steve's head. Seeing Jones' movements, Steve wasn't surprised at all. He changed his hand movements, raised his hands, and grabbed Jones' ankles directly. Capturing the changes in Steve's movements, Jones directly bent his legs, and his knees were directly on Steve's palms. Directly restraining Steve's hands. Then, in the meantime, Jones doubled over and landed a hard right hook into Steve's face. 
Received by Jones' sudden blow, Steve staggered back two steps, and Jones took advantage of the momentum to stand on the ground again. Bah! Spitting bloodshot saliva on the ground beside him, Steve wiped his face with his palm, and couldn't help but said, what kind of martial art are you using? E.H. Hearing Steve's words, he couldn't help being taken aback, what kind of martial arts he used, he didn't seem to know. But Jones is Jones after all, as soon as he rolled his eyes, Jones said without any hesitation, freedom fight. Freedom fight. Hearing what Jones said, Steve was taken aback for a moment, with a puzzled look on his face. Kickboxing only began to appear in the 1960s, how could Steve know this martial art? Shaking his head slightly, Steve twitched his mouth and said directly, I haven't heard of 5.9, but it feels like a woman's fighting skills. Um. Jones' face froze when he heard Steve's words, and he didn't know what to say for a moment. His action just now was not free combat, but like the kind of climbing himself on the enemy relying on the enemy's strength and weight the way of fighting is really similar to women's fighting skills. At least, Black Widow often uses such techniques to fight. Thinking of this, Jones' face darkened, without saying anything, his eyes rolled wildly, and he rushed towards Steve again. The temporary room shield made for Steve is not very big, and Jones and Steve's physical abilities are very average. After just a few fights, the entire room was almost demolished by the two, and when Na and the two agents at the door had disappeared, it seems that they received Nick's order to give Jones and Steve the two leave enough room to fight. And in the fight with Steve, Jones felt more and more difficult. It is true that Sangoyu's Sharingan allows him to easily capture every movement of Steve, but capturing Steve's movements does not necessarily mean that he can respond correctly every time. Steve will not be a top fighter master, and after teaching just a few strokes, Steve has figured out Jones' weakness. He has very poor combat experience. Jones can react to every move Steve makes, but if Steve sells an opening and Jones attacks that way again, it's time for Steve to fight back. It is easy to swing a fist, but it is much more difficult to retract a fist that has been swung with all its strength. This also led to many times when Steve changed his moves midway. Jones could clearly see his movements, but he couldn't change his moves in time, resulting in being hit by Steve's attack. After getting punched a few times for this reason, Jones drew back without any hesitation, opening the distance between him and Steve. Gently rubbing his chest that had just been hit, Jones raised the corner of his mouth and said directly, as expected of Captain America, one of the world's top fighting masters. Thank you. Hearing what Jones said, Steve frowned, but there was no joy on his face. Your physical fitness is very strong no less than mine, although I don't know what kind of martial arts you use, but I have to say, your combat experience is terrible. E.H. Jones' mouth twitched when he heard Steve's words, and a helpless look appeared on his face. Steve said it so directly that he didn't even know what to say. I'll ask again, where am I? Staring straight at Jones, Steve's face was extremely serious. New York. The corner of his mouth twitched, and Jones' face returned to calm at the moment, it's now 70 years after you crashed the plane, congratulations, big ice, you are now nearly a hundred years old. Quote. What? Hearing what Jones said, Steve's eyes widened, and a look of horror appeared on his face. I don't believe it. With a light drink, Steve turned around in an instant, and rushed directly to the outside. I knew it would be like this. Seeing Steve's movements, Jones narrowed his eyes, and two red rays hit Steve in front of him in an instant. A pothole the size of a plate was directly punched in the ground. Seeing this scene, Steve's footsteps stopped instantly. Afterwards, I saw Steve turn around and look at Jones with a strange look on his face. I didn't use any weapon. The corner of his mouth raised slightly, and Jones' thermal energy ray was used again, directly drawing a crack on the ground in front of Steve. Mr. Steve Rogers, times have changed, you may have to accept a lot of new things. As he said that, Jones raised his head and shouted to Fang Yin's hidden camera, Nick. Get a car ready, maybe I need to take Mr. Steve to see the reality. Ten minutes later, after touring several blocks near Times Square, Steve's face was full of confusion. Not paying attention to Steve's appearance, Jones directly asked the driving agent to drive the car back to the shield branch. Opening the car door, Jones directly dropped Steve, who had already had another license plate, from the car. 
But at this time, Nick Fury was already standing at the door of the branch. Quietly glanced at Steve in front of him, Nick said softly, regarding the previous broadcast. I'm sorry, I thought it's best to tell you slowly, although it turns out that's not the way to go. When he said this, Nick turned his head and glanced at Jones beside him. Seeing Nick's gaze, the corner of Jones' mouth couldn't help but glared at Nick. It seems to be saying again, Steve discovered it by himself before, so what does it have to do with me? Glared by Jones, Nick didn't say anything, just turned his eyes to Steve who was on the side again. Steve has been silent since he knew he had been asleep for 70 years, which made Nick feel a little worried about his state. Are you okay? It's all right. Hearing Nick's question, Steve finally spoke and nodded lightly. Steve's face was full of disappointment. I just, missed an appointment. Hearing Steve's words, the corner of Joan's mouth twitched, and an inexplicable look appeared in his eyes. Steve did miss an appointment, lost Agent Carter, but gained Agent Carter's niece. I don't know how Steve will feel when he recalls these two relationships in the future. Shaking his head lightly, Jones directly put these messy thoughts out of his mind, what does it have to do with Steve cheating on his ex-girlfriend's niece? Don't talk about dating his ex-girlfriend's niece, even if Steve is dating his ex-girlfriend's granddaughter, Jones doesn't care. And, Steve's relationship with Carter was only vague when the plane crashed, and it hadn't really been revealed. What happened to Carter's niece? But, Steve and Carter's relationship is not really made clear, that is, Steve is still a virgin. Thoughts flashed through his mind, and Jones looked at Steve with a strange look in his eyes. Jones. Just as Jones was pondering about Steve maliciously in his heart, Nick on the side suddenly said, I'll leave Rogers to you. There's no need for him to quickly adapt to the current society. Oh, good. Hearing Nick's words, Jones immediately pulled his attention back, and whispered to Steve, Big Ice Cube, come with me. E.H. Hearing Jones' words, the corner of Nick's mouth twitched. Since bringing Steve back to New York, Jones has been calling Rogers that way. Nick tried to correct him before, but it didn't work out in the end. Compared with Nick, Steve's performance was much more flat. He glanced at Jones suspiciously, and Steve couldn't help but said, Well, your name is Jones. Jones, why are you calling me Tian Binkuai? Because you were an ice cube when I dug you up. With the corners of his mouth slightly raised, Jones walked directly into S.H.I.E.L.D. Okay big ice cube, don't waste time, you still have a lot to learn. One month later, in New York, in Tony Stark's villa. Glancing sideways at Jones on the sofa, Tony's fingers kept flying on the keyboard, as if he was doing something. And when Tony moved, his mouth was not idle. Jones. I heard that you recently stayed with a living antique for a month. Well, nodding indifferently, Jones said directly and softly, according to the rules, you should call that living antique uncle, he is only a few years younger than your father, and their relationship is not bad. Good. Hearing what Jones said, the corner of Tony's mouth twitched, and he said helplessly, I haven't heard my dad mention him much. Speaking of this, Tony paused, with a self-deprecating look on his face, it's probably only a thousand times. Ha ha ha, hearing Tony's words, Jones laughed and couldn't help but said, then have you ever suspected that maybe the person your dad really likes is Steve Roger? Hey. As soon as Jones finished speaking, Tony shouted, what are you thinking? How is this possible? My dad is a famous playboy all over America. Speaking of this, Tony seemed to be afraid of what Jones would say again, and hurriedly changed the subject. I said, what have you and that living antique been doing this month? Fighting, studying, modern history in high school, modern history in college, thanks to the big ice cube, I have studied the course of modern history well. Hearing Tony's question, Jones narrowed his eyes, and his face was full of pain. A look of melancholy appeared. Study. Hearing what Jones said, Tony's eyes lit up, and a smile instantly appeared on his face. Do you need teachers in computer, physics, chemistry, and mechanical engineering? I think I am quite confident. Go away. Hearing Tony's words, Jones laughed and cursed without any hesitation. We fight every day, do you want to join in? Let me tell you first, if your body can't resist more than 2,000 pounds of force fist, don't get involved. 2,000 pounds. Hearing what Jones said, the corner of Tony's mouth twitched, and he said without any hesitation, 
if you are not allowed to wear armor, just pretend I didn't say so. Hearing Tony's words, Jones narrowed his eyes, and couldn't help but smile angrily on his face. During this month, Jones basically stayed with Steve all the time. And their daily activities are to take Steve around, learn about the changes in New York and explain some modern technologies. Then go back to S.H.I.E.L.D. to study modern history and let Steve know some things about these years. And then, the fight, helping Steve get back to peak physical shape no jiao jiao. Among these three activities, for Jones, the most anticipated is the battle. In the first few days, Jones had already learned all of Steve's moves, and then he fought non-stop to hone his combat experience. Now, Jones is almost on par with Steve. Definitely, this is when Steve doesn't use shield, Jones doesn't use Sharingan or other abilities. Hey, Jones. Just as Jones fell into a short memory, Tony over there suddenly said loudly, the guy you asked me to look for has found a suit. Really? Hearing Tony's words, Jones' eyes lit up, and a gleam of joy appeared on his face. Definitely. Hearing what Jones said, Tony nodded without any hesitation, and then pointed his finger directly at the computer screen. He is really good at hiding, I have searched all the monitoring equipment in the world, but I can't find his trace. Then how did you find him? Hearing Tony's words, Jones froze for a moment, and couldn't help showing a puzzled look on his face. Shield. Turning the corner of his mouth, Tony said indifferently, I have to say, this organization is quite capable. After that guy left New York, all the traces he used have been recorded, including when he went to which city did you visit, where did you stay for a few days, and what did you do? The details are very detailed. E.H. Jones was speechless for a moment when he heard Tony's words. Glancing at Tony helplessly, Jones said indifferently, I won't say anything else, I can only tell you that you take shield too simply. To be honest, you can now prepare to talk to them. Don't worry. I'm doing 760 very covertly, and they won't be able to find me if I give them a second chance. Hearing what Jones said, Tony still had a calm expression on his face, and he didn't care about Jinxie at all. Take your words to heart. Seeing Tony's appearance, Jones couldn't help shaking his head helplessly, and said softly, Anyway, you'd better be mentally prepared, I'll take Stern away, and I'll be back in a few days. Great, you're finally taking that vegetative person away. Hearing what Jones said, Tony frowned, and said directly, You won't bring him back again. Think for yourself. Rolling a blank look at Tony, Jones walked directly to the other side. For more than a month, Stern was given Jones' hypnotic ability, and then he was thrown here with Tony. Apart from eating, drinking, and sleeping, Stern would not have any other reactions at all. Although I don't know if this will cause damage to Stern's brain, AGCG, but Jones can't keep him awake, and he can't let him out, so that's the only way to go. After a while, Jones finally stepped out of Dr. Stern's room, and at this time, Jones had already put on his steel armor. Tony. Turning his head to look at Tony in front of the computer, Jones said directly, send me his location, and I'll start now. Are you in such a hurry? Hearing what Jones said, Tony was taken aback for a moment, but he didn't ask anything, nodded lightly, and Tony said directly, J-A-R-V-I-S, send the location to Jones. Okay, sir. Following Tony's voice, J-A-R-V-I-S responded directly, and the next moment, a file was directly sent to Jones Steel Armor. After receiving the file and opening it, there is a world map inside, and a delivery point is flashing above North America, which is clearly visible. Quote dot dot dot. Canada, sure enough. Seeing the position of the red dot, Jones shrank his pupils and said directly, Tony. I'm leaving. The next moment, without waiting for Tony's answer, Jones activated the thrusters directly under his feet, and flew out along the lane next to him. Hey. You haven't taken that vegetative person away yet. Seeing Jones' actions, Tony was taken aback for a moment, and couldn't help but let out a loud shout. Mr. Tony. In fact, Dr. Stern has been taken by Mr. Jones. What? Hearing what J-A-R-V-I-S said, Tony was taken aback for a moment, then nodded, and said softly, Take it, amazing guy. Two hours later, outside a house on the prairie in southern Canada. Boom boom boom. Knocking on the door lightly, Jones had a calm expression on his face. Hey, Banner, I know you're inside, come out, don't make me and my friends wait too long. 
Hey, hearing what Jones said, Stern behind Jones couldn't help showing a look of horror on his face. You said, the person in this room is Banner. Oh. Why did you bring me here? Uh. I mean, are we safe now? Shut up. Jones twitched the corner of his mouth when he heard Stern's words, and said without any hesitation, if you don't keep quiet, I don't mind knocking you unconscious first, and then sending you to Banner's side, definitely, it may also be Hulk's side. E.H. Hearing what Jones said, Stern was taken aback, and the whole person fell silent instantly. Bang bang bang. The see-through eye was open, Jones looked at Banner who was about to escape from the window, couldn't help but impatiently slammed on the door again, and said loudly, Bruce Banner, I know you're inside, don't pretend, I'm not here to get you. I brought drive. Stern, and I think you'll be looking forward to seeing him. Quote quote. Within a few seconds of Jones' voice falling, the door of the room was pulled open, and Banner's figure also appeared. Dr. Stern. As soon as the door opened, Banner's eyes immediately focused on Stern. Hey, seeing Banner again, Stern narrowed his eyes, and couldn't help showing an embarrassing smile on his face, Dr. Banner. It's nice to see you again. Noticing the fear in Stern's eyes, Banner sighed helplessly, and turned his gaze to Jones beside him, tell me, who are you and what are you looking for me for? My name is Jones. Hearing Banner's question, Jones raised the corner of his mouth and said directly, I'm here to help you, but, won't you invite me in for a while? Dot 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 quote. Hearing what Jones said, Banner paused for a while, without saying anything, but subconsciously looked into the distance and the sky. Relax. Noticing Banner's movement, Jones smiled slightly and said directly, only Dr. Stern and I are here, there is no ambush. Hearing what Jones said, Banner glanced at the corner of his mouth, obviously not believing what Jones said, but after a few seconds of silence, Banner took two steps back and opened the door, come in. Let's go. Turning his head and glanced at Stern behind him, Jones raised his mouth and walked directly into Banner's room. I. Can I. Hearing Jones' words, Stern subconsciously wanted to refuse, but when he was stared at by Jones, he gave up and followed Jones obediently into Banner's room. Jones had already removed all hypnotic abilities from Stern, but Stern still had some vague memories of being controlled by Jones. Even if Stern has a top IQ, when facing a man like Jones who can control others, he still cannot avoid the fear in his heart. Ignoring Stern, who was cautious behind him, Jones went straight to the chair as soon as he entered the room and sat down. Afterwards, Jones glanced around, and a look of admiration appeared on his face. I have to say, Dr. Bruce, you really have the ability to find such a good place in such a short time. He he, hearing what Jones said, Banner sneered, and went directly in front of Jones, and said softly, what's the purpose of you coming to me after making such a mess? Just say it straight. It's very simple. Hearing Banner's words, Jones narrowed his eyes and punched Stern with a backhand, knocking him unconscious, I'm here to extend an invitation to you. Quote exclamation mark exclamation mark exclamation mark quote. Seeing Jones' actions, Banner was taken aback for a moment, and he stood up from the chair in an instant with a look of vigilance on his face, what do you want to do? Don't be nervous, Banner. With a smile on his face, Jones said softly, it's just something I don't want Dr. Stern to know. Having said that, Jones looked serious and continued, I want to build an organization. In other words, this organization does not require you to do anything for it, there is no interest relationship between members, the organization has no leader, and everyone's relationship is equal. You can even pretend that it doesn't exist at ordinary times, and this organization will appear only when needed. Good idea. Hearing what Jones said, Banner nodded indifferently, and a mocking look suddenly appeared on his face, but, why should I join this organization? The United States has military soldiers, and the government agent, and even that Iron Man who dances every day. I don't need to get involved in such things, do I? If this is what you really think, then you wouldn't have jumped out of the helicopter that night. Quietly watching Banner Jones with a determined look on his face. Dot 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 quote. Hearing Jones' words, Banner was taken aback, and the whole person couldn't help but fell silent. After a while, Banner finally nodded slightly, and said, Okay, I admit that you are right, but I want to ask a question. When he said this, Banner's face became serious up. 
Seeing Banner's appearance, Jones' expression also became a little serious, and he nodded slightly, and Jones said directly, you ask. If. I mean if. Staring straight into Jones' eyes, Banner said word by word, if I don't agree to join this organization, will you do anything to me? You know, the devastation the Hulk can wreak is terrifying. If one day Hulk is really sabotaging, then we will definitely attack you. Staring straight into Banner's eyes, Jones' words did not have the slightest hesitation. Quote exclamation mark exclamation mark quote. Upon hearing Jones' words, Banner's pupils shrank instantly, and a trace of coldness appeared in his eyes. Catching Banner's change, Jones' expression didn't change a bit. He quietly got up from the chair, and Jones walked directly to Banner's side. Banner, there is something I want to tell you, don't pretend to be crazy when facing me. Speaking of this, Jones leaned over directly, staring straight at Banner's eyes. I know, you want to live a normal life, you don't want to transform when you are excited, transform when you are excited, and become angry when you are excited just transforming, you're trying to take control of the Hulk, and, you're on your way to success. Bruce Banner is the Hulk, you can't hide it from me. Hearing Jones' words, Banner's whole body trembled, and a trace of green also spread directly from the depths of the pupils, covering the entire eyeball in an instant. What else do you know? I know what I should know, I don't know what I shouldn't know. The corner of his mouth twitched slightly, and Jones directly threw a watch-shaped thing aside. At the same time, Jones turned around and walked outside. This is the communication device for the members of the Illuminati. Don't use it if there is no serious problem. By the way, the strap is made of elastic metal. You can transform with it. Also, take Dr. Stern as a gift from me, I believe he will be of some help to you. Watching Jones leave, Banner couldn't help turning his gaze to the unconscious Stern. Mr. Lan, muttered softly, the corners of Banner's mouth subconsciously raised. A year later, New York, on the top floor of the Stark building, on the rooftop outside Tony's office. Hey, Jones. Turning his head to look at Jones lying outside, Tony immediately shouted, The sun is almost setting, so stop leaning outside, come and have a drink with me. Hearing Tony's words, Jones frowned, and refused without any hesitation. I know the sun is about to set, but the sunshine here is very good. 17 0, give me some more time. Quote dot dot dot. Really. Hearing what Jones said, the corner of Tony's mouth twitched, and he walked towards the rooftop with two glasses of wine. And following Tony's movements, J-A-R-V-I-S directly opened the glass door leading to the rooftop, leaving only a width that was almost just enough for Tony to pass. Hey. As soon as he walked out of the window, Tony frowned and couldn't help complaining, although I have said it many times, I still have to say that you made me dislike my building already. How much is the temperature here? At least over 40 degrees. As he spoke, Tony turned his head slightly, and looked at a thermometer behind him, it's already 47 degrees here. Really. Actually, I feel quite cool. Hearing Tony's words, Jones chuckled and didn't care at all. At the moments Jones lay leisurely on a special chair, the surrounding air was extremely hot, but Jones didn't have a single drop of sweat all over his body, and his face had a laid-back look. This year's life is really too comfortable, there are no super criminals to make trouble, no terrorist organizations appear, and even the only major event that happened, Thor comes. Also missed by Jones for being too short. Well, speaking of other major events, Tony gave Roddy a set of armor and the birth of, War Machine, should be considered a major event. Brotherhood didn't move, the Mutant Federation was honest, Jones almost didn't know how to make himself stronger. But, luckily it was only a near miss. One month after returning from Banner, Jones directly commissioned Tony to make a device, and the reclining chair that Jones is now lying on is also a part of this device. It is already evening, when the sun is about to set. However, there was still a dazzling sun shining on Jones' chair, illuminating the surroundings extremely brightly. And looking up, you can see that the top of the entire Stark building is in a concave shape, like a funnel, and the bottom of this, funnel, is aimed at Jones' chair. If you look down from the height, you can see the inner wall of the funnel, which is full of bright things like lenses. According to Tony's calculations, as long as the device is turned on, those small lenses will refract the sunlight shining on it again and again finally all of them will be shot on the front of the chair below. 
With this thing, Jones can concentrate the sunlight of hundreds of square meters in Fang Yuan on his body, so that Jones' eyes and physical fitness can grow rapidly. The only disadvantage of this thing is that the temperature around the point where the sun falls is too high. It is evening now, and the surrounding temperature is 47 degrees. At noon, the surrounding temperature can reach 60 or 70 degrees. At that time, Tony would not even touch the door to open the roof, let alone walk on the roof. As for the central part of the chair, the temperature is even more terrifying. Even a piece of wood will be burnt here soon. Looking at Jones with a relaxed look on the recliner, the corner of Tony's mouth twitched, and a look of envy appeared on his face. Since Jones commissioned Tony to make such a thing, and put it on top of the Stark building, he naturally wouldn't hide its purpose from Tony, so Tony also knew that Jones' body would be strengthened as long as it was exposed to the sun. Just basking in the sun can strengthen your body. What a perfect ability, anyway, when Jones told Tony, Tony couldn't sleep well for three days because of jealousy. Definitely this is what Tony himself said, whether it is true or not, Jones does not know. Turning the corner of his mouth, Tony shouted directly, J-A-R-V-I-S. Turn off this machine, and cool down the surrounding area. Okay, sir. Hearing Tony's words, J-A-R-V-I-S responded and turned off the equipment directly. At the same time, a large piece of dry ice sprayed out from the surroundings, making the roof overflow with white mist. However, this also caused the temperature on the rooftop to drop by 4.5 in an instant. Hiss, he took a deep breath of carbon dioxide, but Tony showed a look of enjoyment on his face, this kind of temperature is cool. Come on, Jones, cheers. As he spoke, Tony directly handed the wine glass in his left hand to Jones, with a smug smile on his face. Hey, I could still absorb half an hour of sunlight. Seeing Tony's movements, the corners of Jones' mouth twitched, and a helpless smile appeared on his face, but there was no complaint in his words. He has been absorbing sunlight like this for nearly a year, and it's not bad for half an hour. The corner of his mouth raised slightly, Jones directly took the cup handed over by Tony, chuckled lightly, and said, cheers. Draining the wine in the glass in one gulp, Jones walked directly into Stark's office. But when Jones saw another person standing in the office, he couldn't help being stunned. Hey, Potts, when did you come, I didn't even see it. Really. Hearing what Jones said, Potts raised the corner of his mouth, and said directly, Actually, you will care, it seems that 06 is only the big guy in the sky. Hey, hearing what Potts said, Jones chuckled, but didn't say anything. In Jones' view now, there is really nothing more attractive than becoming stronger. Seeing myself getting stronger and feeling the strength in my body increasing little by little, this kind of thing is really addictive. And in the time between Jones and Potts, Tony also stepped into the office and said loudly, Hey, Jones, the Stark Building's new energy system is about to start running, do you have any good suggestions? Quote. Suggestion. Hearing Tony's words, Jones frowned, and said directly, I think the best suggestion is that I get out of here quickly and stop being a light bulb for you too. Well, that's right, I think so too. Hearing what Jones said, Tony gave a smirk, his face full of approval. Cut. Hearing Tony's words, Jones twitched the corner of his mouth, and was about to say something, but before he could say anything, the voice of J-A-R-V-I-S suddenly rang out from the room. Mr. Jones, there is your phone number, named Nick Fury. Nick, what is this old guy calling again? Hearing what J-A-R-V-I-S said, Tony raised his brows, and a look of doubt appeared on his face. Never mind, you'll know if you answer it. Hearing Tony's words, Jones twitched his mouth and said loudly without any hesitation, J-A-R-V-I-S, take the call. Okay, win. Not long after J-A-R-V-I-S's voice fell, Nick's slightly anxious voice rang directly in the room, Jones. Where are you now? Stark building. Is there something wrong? Sensitively aware of the impatience in Nick's tone, Jones couldn't help being taken aback. Stark building. Hearing what Jones said, Nick was taken aback for a moment, and his tone couldn't help showing a little more joy, is Tony by your side now? That's right. Upon hearing Nick's words, the corner of Tony's mouth twitched, and he said directly, but if you have anything to do, just don't say it, I won't care about it. You. Hearing Tony's words, Nick was taken aback, and couldn't help but said, 
Tony, things are different this time, I swear, really. I will send you the file and hope you read it think carefully about it later. Okay, okay, I see, J-A-R-V-I-S, hang up. Hearing Nick's words, the corner of Tony's mouth twitched, and he shouted impatiently. Hearing the conversation between the two, the corner of Joan's mouth twitched, and a somewhat helpless expression appeared on his face. When Jones asked Tony to find Banner's trace a year ago, Tony directly hacked into the intelligence curry side of S.H.I.E.L.D. Jones also reminded Tony at the time, get ready to be approached by S.H.I.E.L.D., but Tony didn't pay attention at all. And in fact, Tony was approached by Nick. This also made Tony more and more unhappy with Nick. While Jones was thinking, Tony had already opened the file Nick sent. Jones. Staring straight at the information in the file. Tony couldn't help but sigh softly, is this the one you mentioned? Huh. Hearing Tony's words, Jones frowned, and walked directly to Tony's side, only to see Tony 737 pointing at the information on Tesseract curiously. Without directly answering Tony's question, Jones glanced at other materials, and a curious look appeared on his face. In addition to the information on Tesseract, Nick also passed on the information on the pre-selected members of his Avengers project. What surprised Jones was that in addition to Thor, Banner, Tony, Natasha Romanoff, Barton, Steve and the extra himself in the original book, there were more Beast, Hank McCoy, Wolverine, Logan, Storm, Orlo Monroe's profile. Nick, this guy has a big heart. He murmured in his heart, and then Jones turned his attention to the information on Tesseract. Sighing lightly, Jones couldn't help muttering. This is a great disaster on the Earth, and it may attract a powerful enemy to the Earth at some point. Having said that, Jones paused slightly, and said softly, and, it seems to have attracted an enemy. What are you going to do? Hearing what Jones said, Tony frowned, and turned his gaze directly to Jones. What else can I do? Glancing sideways at Tony, Jones said without any hesitation, Move pots to a safe place first, it always feels like New York is about to become a battlefield. Dot 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 quote. Hearing Jones' words, Tony was taken aback for a moment, and subconsciously turned his attention to Potts. I understand. Seeing Tony's eyes, Potts nodded lightly, I'm going to Washington by plane tonight. I don't think you need to be so anxious. Stepping up to Potts, Tony's face was full of dissatisfaction. He originally planned to have a romantic date with Potts after Jones left. Tony, the business is important. Looking at Tony in front of him, Potts narrowed his eyes, lifted his foot slightly, and moved directly towards Tony's face. Looking at the crooked Tony and Potts over there, the corner of Jones' mouth twitched, and he was about to leave here. However, before Jones could move, the voice of J-A-R-V-I-S rang again in the room. Mr. Jones, there is a call, it is Nick Fury. Hearing what J-A-R-V-I-S said, is there anything on Jones' side? Tony and Potts on the other side separated instantly. Tony's face was full of anger. So we see, believe it or not, I will uninstall you. Mr. Stark. Hearing Tony's words, J-A-R-V-I-S's tone did not fluctuate. J-A-R-V-I-S is an intelligent program, not a specific software, and it cannot be uninstalled. Quote dot 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 quote. Hearing what J-A-R-V-I-S said, Tony frowned, and said directly, you can say such a thing, it means you are not smart enough. Okay, don't worry about it. Seeing Tony arguing with his smart program manager, Jones couldn't help feeling helpless. J-A-R-V-I-S, put the phone in. Fearing that Tony and Nick would quarrel again, as soon as the phone was connected, Jones said directly, Nick, if you have something to say, just talk about it, otherwise I'm not sure if Tony will hack all your electronic devices. E.H. Hearing what Jones said, Nick couldn't help being taken aback, but wisely, he didn't ask any more questions. Have you read the information that was sent just now? Look, and then what? Hearing Nick's words, the corners of Jones' lips twitched, and an inexplicable look appeared in his eyes. Not paying attention to Jones' tone full of indifference, Nick coughed lightly and said seriously. I hope you invite those three from the X-Men over. Director Nick. I hope you'd better figure out one thing. Hearing Nick's words, Jones twitched his mouth, and a trace of coldness appeared in his eyes. I promised to help S.H.I.E.L.D. carry out more difficult tasks, but negotiations and invitations do not seem to be within this scope. Jones. 
Hearing Joan's words, Nick on the other side of the phone didn't feel any surprise. This is a very difficult task. None of us can keep a calm mind to face Charles. And, in this regard, we no match for Charles at all. He he, hearing Nick's words, Jones immediately sneered. The Soviet Union in the 1930s and 1940s could develop equipment to defend against psychic power. Jones doesn't believe that the current shield does not have. For shield, Charles definitely not an invincible existence. Jones. Without hearing Jones' response, Nick's tone could not help but add a bit of anxiety. You have to know, this is not just our business, although we don't know what the enemy's purpose is, but the power of Tesseract is too great. It is powerful, if you use it to do something, it will definitely be a disaster for the whole world. What to do with it, he he, hearing Nick's words, Jones couldn't help but sneered in his heart. The former Hydra and the current Shield are all those who want to use Tesseract to do something, now with the Tesseract being acquired by Loki, they were even more worried. Although he despises Nick extremely in his heart, Jones also knows the innocence of this incident. Squinting his eyes, Jones said directly, I will go to Charles. But you'd better be mentally prepared, if you succeed the odds are not high. It's okay. Hearing Jones let go, Nick was instantly overjoyed. I believe in your ability. I don't believe it. With a sneer, Jones yelled directly, J-A-R-V-I-S, hang up the phone, and then blacklist Nick Fury. From now on, his phone will directly refuse to accept I. Okay, Mr. Jones. Hearing Jones' words, J-A-R-V-I-S responded directly without any hesitation. But after hearing what Jones said, Nick over there was taken aback, and couldn't help shouting, Hello, promise, hey. Jones. You can't do this. Before he finished speaking, Nick's phone buzzed. Has been hung up by J-A-R-V-I-S. Sighing helplessly, Jones turned his head to Tony and Potts, and said softly, Okay, my light bulb is going to leave soon, you, you can do something else. No one will bother you. Jones. Hearing what Jones said, Potts rolled his eyes and couldn't help saying loudly, I also hope you leave quickly, but it's not because of the reason you said. Ha ha ha, with a laugh, Jones directly took out his steel armor from the different space, dressed quickly, and flew out of the Stark building. Target. Xavier Ability Youth Academy. The Xavier Ability Youth Academy is located in the suburbs of New York. Although the distance is not close, but with the super fast speed of the steel armor, Jones still arrived here within a short time. However, because it was already evening when we set off, by the time Jones got here, it was already completely dark. Instead of landing directly in the academy, Jones landed directly at the gate and put away the steel armor. Glancing at the closed door in front of him, Jones paused for a moment, then directly turned on the kaleidoscope, blurring through it. Although X Academy was established by Charles, the mutant xenophobia inside is still very serious. If he uses the normal method, Jones is not sure how long he will be delayed. Besides, when facing Charles, Jones does not open the kaleidoscope writing wheel eyes, still a little unsure. Xavier Ability Youth Academy was founded in the 1940s, and the site of the academy was the manor of the Charles family. At that time, the Xavier family was also an extremely wealthy family in New York, so the Xavier Ability 657 Youth Academy had a large area. Jones dropped from the door and walked for a few minutes before finally arriving at the front of the teaching building. Stepping to the door of the teaching building, Jones gently knocked on the door. After a while, the sound of footsteps slowly sounded, and then they were pulled away directly. Who are you? Seeing Jones at the door, the person who opened the door was taken aback, and a look of vigilance could not help but appear on his face. How did you get in? Without answering the man's question, he stared straight at the white-haired man in front of him. A gleam of light suddenly appeared in Jones' eyes. You are Aurora. Storm. Aurora, what's the matter? Hearing what Jones said, Aurora was taken aback for a moment, and before saying anything, he. Then, Cyclops Scott was seen walking from behind Aurora. The moment Scott saw Jones, he also focused his gaze directly on Jones. You are. Jones. The moment he saw Jones, Scott couldn't help exclaiming, and a look of surprise appeared on his face, what are you doing here? You know me. Jones was taken aback when he heard Scott's words, and a puzzled look appeared on his face, he seems to have never met Scott before. This guy actually knows me. Well, nodded slightly, and Scott said softly, 
I saw your information from the professor a year ago. After speaking, Scott also turned his gaze to Aurora, and said softly, the professor said he could also be a mutant. When he heard Scott's words, Aurora couldn't help being stunned, and a look of doubt rose on his face. Maybe a mutant. The professor has never said such a thing before, yes it is, no it is not. The professor's ability to determine the identity of a mutant is still very authoritative. He he, with a chuckle, Jones didn't make any excuses, he didn't come here to explain his identity. Staring straight into Scott's glasses, Jones said straight away, is Charles there? I'm looking for him. Just tell me something. Hearing what Jones said, Scott frowned, and couldn't help but think of Charles's abnormal state after talking with Jones a year ago, I won't let you see the professor of. Really. Hearing Scott's words, Jones couldn't help frowning, a GBB, what if I have to meet Charles? Then you can try it. Hearing what Jones said, Scott took a step forward and put his right hand next to his glasses. But the next moment, Scott's face froze, and then there was a look of unwillingness, and he said softly, come with me, the professor wants to see you. A minute later, in Charles's office, quietly looking at Charles sitting opposite, Jones raised the corner of his mouth and said softly, long time no see, professor. Long time no see. Staring straight into Jones' eyes, Charles couldn't help showing a complicated look in his eyes. I used to want to approach you and guide you, but you and the children in the academy it's different, you already have your own thoughts, and you are advancing step by step on the path you set, even if it's me, I can't influence you. Having said that, Charles paused for a while, and then continued. It's just that I didn't expect that after that farewell, you actually joined S.H.I.E.L.D. I didn't join them. Don't get me wrong. Hearing what Charles said, Jones twitched his mouth and said directly, just like you did back then, just helping them. Doesn't mean I'm from S.H.I.E.L.D. Speaking of this, Jones suddenly chuckled and murmured, Charles, do you think it's very interesting? A year ago, you were looking for my evidence for S.H.I.E.L.D. A year later, I will be a lobbyist for S.H.I.E.L.D. A lobbyist. Sensitively grasping the key point in Jones' words, Charles couldn't help showing a look of doubt on his face. What do you think you are here for? Come be a lobbyist. The corner of his mouth raised, Jones stretched out one hand, took out a tablet computer from the different space and handed it to Charles. This is the purpose of S.H.I.E.L.D., you can see for yourself. As a result, Charles directly opened the tablet computer that Jones handed over and looked at it. Twenty minutes later. Slowly handing back the tablet in his hand to Jones, Charles had a serious look on his face, the news here is all true. You already have your own judgment, don't you? The corner of his mouth twitched, and Jones said directly, it's not clear what the enemy's purpose is, but. But Tesseract is enough for us to pay attention to up. What do you want me to do? Help you find the enemy's location. Nodding lightly, Charles drove his wheelchair out from behind the desk and drove directly to the door. If so if so, I am obliged. But I may need to use a special, equipment. No. Grabbing Charles's wheelchair, Jones leaned his head directly in front of Charles's face, you won't find him. Charles, don't trust yourself too much. 1. Hearing what Jones said, Charles was taken aback for a moment, without saying anything, but directly controlled the wheelchair under him and returned to the back of the desk. After doing all this, Charles finally turned his attention to Jones again, are they targeting the X-Men? Hank, Logan, Aurora. They are the targets of S.H.I.E.L.D. You should know that their target is not just this incident, but to let them join the Avengers. But don't worry, even if they join the Avengers, they will still one of the X-Men. Join the Avengers, hearing Jones' words, Charles murmured softly, and continued, Jones. May I know, what do you think? He <laughs> he. Hearing what Charles said, Jones chuckled lightly, and couldn't help but said, I said. I'm different from you, you have children in the academy, and you also shoulder the future of mutant. Don't use I'm making a comparison, we're so far behind. Really, hearing what Jones said, Charles narrowed his eyes, and said softly, Jones, do you know? When I was young, I also faced such a choice. The military personnel forcibly warned the college at that time kids, and there's nothing I can do. Can you understand that feeling? That's why I think you are so hateful. Looking straight into Charles's eyes, Joan's expression suddenly became serious. You have such energy, but you still don't take up the weapon in your hand to defend yourself. No murder. 
Hee hee, this is the funniest joke I've ever heard. Quote dot 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 quote. Hearing Joan's words, Charles couldn't help but fell silent for a while. After a long while, Charles suddenly said, Jones, I don't know if you are a mutant, but I can feel that you have a very unique view on the current situation of mutant. I want to ask you, if you say let you make suggestions, Xavier Academy, how to develop. Hearing what Charles said, the corners of Jones' mouth twitched, and a helpless expression appeared on his face. He was obviously just here as a lobbyist, so why did he suddenly get involved in the development of Xavier College? Sighing lightly, Jones said directly, If there is someone in Xavier Academy who has both your and Magneto's thoughts, then you should abdicate. A person who takes into account both my ideas and Eric's. Hearing what Jones said, Charles narrowed his eyes and said subconsciously, You mean Scott? It seems that you are not stupid. With a smile on his face, Jones said directly, Okay, I'm not interested in discussing Mutant, Xavier Academy or X-Men with you. I'm here to find people joined Avengers. Hank is now the director of the Mutant Affairs Department. I don't care about him. Scott is your best successor. I don't care. Logan isn't here now, and I don't care. The last one, you have to let people go. Ororo. Hearing what Jones said, Charles narrowed his eyes and said directly, I can call her over, but it's up to you whether I can persuade her. After the words fell, Charles narrowed his eyes and called Aurora directly by telepathy. Seeing Charles's actions, Jones narrowed his eyes, but his evaluation of Charles was even lower in his heart. Charles himself had already agreed, but he still asked Jones to tell Aurora. Maybe, Charles was not suitable to be a leader in the first place, but the job that was most suitable for him. Still a teacher. The campus of Xavier College is not small, but the teaching building is not very big. Just two or three minutes after Charles's message was sent, Aurora opened the door and walked into Charles's office. As soon as he entered the door, Aurora first glanced sideways at Jones on the side, and then looked at Charles on the other side. Professor, are you looking for me? I was looking for you. Without waiting for Charles to speak, Jones stood up directly from his seat, turned and looked at Aurora behind him. Let's put it simply, S.H.I.E.L.D. wants to set up an organization composed of people with extraordinary ability, they want to invite you to join. Having said this, Jones paused for a moment before continuing, but don't worry, even if you join this organization, you are still a member of the X-Men, just like Hank. And the rest of the organization, one year the Captain America just dug out before, and Iron Man, I believe, if you have a good relationship with them, they will be very willing to help mutant when it is difficult. Iron Man. Captain America. Hearing what Jones said, Aurora couldn't help being stunned. Both of them are hot figures in the United States. The former has been active for more than a year, and there are countless people adored superhero. The latter has been portrayed by the United States as a spiritual leader for nearly 70 years. These two people have great influence in the United States and the world. If they are willing to help mutant, mutant's situation will be much better in an instant. But, a thought flashed in his mind, and Aurora subconsciously set his sights on Charles, the professor probably won't agree. You don't have to care about Charles. Seeing Aurora's actions, Jones raised his mouth, 263, and said directly, he has already agreed, and now we only need your consent. What? Hearing what Jones said, Aurora was taken aback, and subconsciously turned his gaze to Charles, his face was full of surprise. Seeing Aurora's appearance, Charles was taken aback for a moment, and a trace of regret suddenly arose in his heart, but although Charles didn't say it clearly just now, he did agree to Joan's condition. After a moment of silence, Charles nodded slightly, and said softly, Mr. Aurora Jones is right. But don't worry, if you disagree, no one will force you. I agree. Aurora answered without waiting for the professor to finish speaking. Then let's go. Hearing Aurora's words, Jones raised the corner of his mouth and said directly, Time is running out, you should need some time to understand the upcoming problems and future teammates. N. Hearing what Jones said, Aurora nodded slightly, but didn't say anything. Narrowing his eyes, Jones turned to the professor and said, Charles, please, I will take Miss Aurora away first. N. Hearing Jones' words, Charles responded heavily, without saying anything, but a look of melancholy appeared on his face. Sensing the change in Charles's mood, 
Jones raised the corner of his mouth, turned around and walked outside. Seeing this, Aurora followed Jones' pace and walked out of the house together. A moment later, at the entrance of the teaching building of Xavier College, he glanced sideways at Aurora beside him, and Jones directly took out the steel armor from the different space and put it on his body. Miss Aurora, do you need me to drive you all the way? Quote. No need. Responded coldly, Aurora's eyes were instantly covered by a sheet of white, and his whole body was also floated up by a sudden gust of wind. I can fly myself. That's the best. With a chuckle, the thrusters under Joan's feet were activated, and he flew directly in the direction of the Stark building. Compared with the steel armor, Aurora Yufeng flight's method is undoubtedly much slower. Taking care of Aurora's speed, Jones didn't fly too fast, and looked back at Aurora from time to time. Ever since leaving Xavier Academy, Aurora's face has always been full of preoccupations, and his face is also extremely serious. Jones knew why Aurora was like this, and even said that Aurora's situation was caused by Jones alone. These people in the X-Men have an inexplicable trust in Charles. They believe that Charles will not abandon them, and that Charles is the big tree that has always sheltered them. Aurora knew what happened to Charles before, and in Aurora's knowledge, Charles would never let anyone from the Xavier Academy or the X-Men join an organization like S.H.I.E.L.D. and become an agent specializing in combat. In Aurora's heart, even if he entered the organization that Jones said was a good thing for Mutant and Xavier Academy, Charles would not agree, and Aurora had even prepared Charles to reject Jones' request, prepare to ask her to stay. This doesn't mean that Aurora doesn't want to join S.H.I.E.L.D. Song means that she wants to see Charles's retention and reluctance for her. This is like a child who is about to drop out of school to work for the family's livelihood. Although the child has made up his mind to go out, the child still wants to hear his father's persuasion. Carry it. In Aurora's heart, Charles is undoubtedly such a father figure, but not only did Charles not keep her, he even agreed to this matter earlier than her. Knowing this, the emotions in Aurora's heart must be very complicated. Speaking of resentment, definitely not, but Aurora's disappointment with Charles is inevitable. This, is Joan's calculation. S.H.I.E.L.D. will be disbanded sooner or later, and Avengers will change from an official organization to a private organization. Jones, he wants to control the Avengers, not the scattered Avengers like in the movie, but a united Avengers. Since Aurora has joined the Avengers Alliance, Jones will never allow her to be in the Sao Ying's heart as in Han, he must slowly cut off the fetters between Aurora and Charles. 12.8 when Aurora agreed to Joan's invitation, the first part of the plan to separate Aurora and Charles had already started. There was no lie in Joan's words, Charles had indeed given Aurora permission to join S.H.I.E.L.D., before Aurora himself agreed. Charles didn't realize this problem at first, but when he saw the look in Aurora's eyes, he immediately reflected it. However, even if Charles reacts, it is useless. There is no way to explain this kind of psychological problem clearly on the spot, but Charles wants to take Aurora away on the spot. Jones is a conspiracy. A blatant conspiracy, even if Charles finds out, there is nothing he can do about it. After a while, Jones and Aurora finally arrived at the Stark building. It landed directly on the rooftop where Jones usually soaked up the sunlight, and Jones took Aurora directly into the office. Hey Jones, you're back. Seeing Jones and Aurora walking in from the rooftop, Tony got up and walked towards them. At the same time, he extended his hand to Aurora and said softly, Who is this? Aurora, you can call me Storm. Hearing Tony's words, Aurora shook hands with Tony directly. Tony Stark. You can call me Tony, Stark, whatever you want. Nodding lightly, Tony turned his gaze directly to Jones at the side. Potts has already left. Underscore 1. I want to know what to do in the next 10 steps. It's very simple. Stretching his finger in the direction of the computer, Jones said indifferently, take Aurora to find out the situation, then take a good rest, and go to S.H.I.E.L.D. tomorrow. This time the matter is not easy, we have to fight 12 divided attention. Okay. Hearing what Jones said, Tony frowned, and couldn't help saying, honestly, I really don't want to see Nick Fury's black face, it always makes me want to beat him up. I also have the same idea. I haven't acted yet. The corner of his mouth twitched, and Jones couldn't help but an angry smile appeared on his face. The next day, the Shield branch near Times Square in New York. 
Stepping into the gate of the distribution, Tony couldn't help complaining, why do we come here first, and then go to the real assembly place? Wouldn't it be better to just ask them for the coordinates of the final destination? You have to come here first waste time. Shut up. Hearing Tony's words, the corner of Joan's mouth twitched, and he couldn't help but said, you've already said it all the way. How do I know why so much? Okay. Hearing what Jones said, Tony nodded helplessly, and murmured, this makes me want to punch Nick Fury in the black face even more. Maybe you will have such an opportunity. The corner of his mouth raised, and Jones' eyes locked on the person who was approaching him in front of him, Detective Phil Coulson. We meet again. Mr. Jones. Hearing what Jones said, Phil Coulson nodded slightly, and then turned his gaze directly to the two people beside Jones, Mr. Stark, Miss Aurora. Okay, stop talking nonsense. Hearing that Phil Coulson still felt polite, Tony said impatiently, let's go now. Or you can just tell me where the headquarters of S.H.I.E.L.D. is. Ah, hearing Tony's words, Phil Coulson was taken aback for a moment, and then said directly, okay, then let's go straight away. As he spoke, Phil Coulson walked directly into the headquarters, and at the same time said, there is a plane on the roof, the captain should be there by now. Captain. Hearing Phil Coulson's words, Tony was taken aback, and couldn't help muttering in his heart, Steve Rogers. I want to see what kind of person he is, worthy of daddy's praise again and again, miss. Although Tony had such an idea in his mind, the first meeting between Tony and Steve was very dull. After a few simple words of courtesy, the group took a fighter jet directly to the S.H.I.E.L.D. headquarters, where the space carrier was located, flew over. S.H.I.E.L.D.'s space carrier was parked in the waters west of the Atlantic Ocean, not too far away from New York State. Taking supersonic fighter jets, Jones and his party did not take too long to reach this destination. Stepping down from the fighter plane, Tony's face was full of disappointment. I wasted so much effort, did I just come here? An aircraft carrier. I thought there would be some novel discoveries. Mr. Stark. Hearing Tony's words, Phil Coulson on the side could not help but smile slightly, and said softly, this is not as simple as an aircraft carrier, and soon you will have novel discoveries. Really. Hearing Phil Coulson's words, Tony twitched his mouth, and then responded, but his eyes directly locked on the two figures from another direction. Those were Natasha Romanoff and Banner. Yesterday, Natasha Romanoff had found Banner and successfully persuaded him to bring him to this 847 space carrier. Seeing the next moment between the two, Tony raised his head, opened his arms, and walked in the direction of Natasha Romanoff. Hey, isn't this Natalie? My personal assistant. Why did you appear into this place? Tony. Hearing Tony's words, Natasha Romanoff had a look of helplessness on his face, and sideways avoided Tony's hug. Natasha Romanoff said directly, such behavior will make you look very childish. Okay. Hearing Natasha Romanoff's words, Tony glanced at his mouth indifferently, I thought the spy game was the most childish behavior. I glanced at Tony who was arguing with Natasha Romanoff, Aurora who was expressionless and silent next to him, and Banner who was looking around not far away, the misfit captain on the other side. Jones couldn't help but let out a wry smile. Well, a group of problem children. However, the Avengers Alliance team has finally assembled, which is a good thing. While Jones was thinking, Phil Coulson left the deck directly, and Steve and Banner got together at some point, discussing something softly. Seeing this scene, the corners of Jones' lips twitched, and a smile couldn't help but appear on his face. Banner's original research materials were all the research materials that Dr. Erskine had survived, and Steve was the only successful recipient of Dr. Erskine's super soldier serum. For Banner, Steve's research value is undoubtedly huge amounts of. With a chuckle, Jones looked directly at Aurora, aren't you looking around? What are you doing here? Quote dot 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 quote. Hearing what Jones said, Aurora shook his head lightly, and said indifferently, there's nothing to see, I don't know anything about scientific research, and I can't even read it. Okay. With a sigh, Jones walked straight forward. Compared with Aurora, he really wants to see the scene of S.H.I.E.L.D.'s space carrier taking off, and it should be quite spectacular if it comes first. And at this time, the bickering between Natasha Romanoff and Tony also ended, his eyes turned, and he glanced at a group of people around him, Natasha Romanoff directly said loudly, 
Gentlemen, you'd better go in quickly, you won't be able to go outside for a while. Breathe. And following Natasha Romanoff's words, a group of shield soldiers on the deck also began to fix and evacuate the aircraft. Glancing at the busy soldiers around, Banner frowned, and couldn't help showing a look of doubt on his face, is this a submarine? You want to lock me in an airtight iron tank hidden deep in the water? Quote. I don't think Hulk will care about this, the big deal is just typing, back quote. Hearing Banner's words, Tony on the other side chuckled, walked directly to Banner's side and handed out his hand, we met for the first time. Tony Stark. Bruce Banner. As soon as he grasped Tony's hand, Banner also had a smile on his face, hello, first time meeting. Don't be courteous over there. Feeling the space carrier under his feet rise a little bit, Jones couldn't help but walk to the edge of the deck, shield made me feel admiration for the first time. Really. Hearing Jones' words, Tony walked directly to Jones' side, watching the helicarrier rapidly rising from the sponge, Tony's pupils shrank, and a look of surprise appeared on his face. This is my second time. The first time was when they found out about my intrusion. I actually feel that the situation is worse than I thought at the beginning. Hearing the conversation between Tony and Jones, Banner's pupils shrank, and he couldn't help muttering. A few minutes later, a group of people, led by Natasha Romanoff, walked into the main control room of the helicarrier, where Nick Fury was already waiting. Seeing the arrival of Jones and his group, Nick on the main console directly walked towards them. Gentlemen, welcome. Thank you. Hearing Nick's words, Steve twitched his mouth and walked directly to the interior of the main control room. When he passed by Nick, he took out a few dollars from his pocket and handed them to him. Definitely, the paper money of Steve's day. Hey. Seeing Steve's actions, Tony was taken aback for a moment, and went directly to Jones's side, chuckling, Jones, I think I'm beginning to like this guy. Really. Hearing Tony's words, Jones couldn't help but smirked, and murmured, I thought Tony Stark liked beautiful women. Jones. Hearing what Jones said, Tony frowned, and said helplessly, you know what I mean. Then do you want to give him a punch? Staring straight at Nick, Jones said indifferently, look, he's walking this way. Two gentlemen. Stepping in front of the two of Jones, Nick's expression had turned livid, can you please lower your voice when you whisper again? As he said that, Nick glanced at a group of laughing staff around him, and said helplessly, backquote, the whole main control room heard your words. Okay. I'll pay attention. Hearing Nick's words, Tony didn't care a bit, turned his head to Jones, and Tony said directly, you take out my armor first, and I'll consider whether to give it to him or not. One punch. As he said that, Tony's eyes still pretended to be inadvertently swept over Nick's face, how much force do you think I should use? Hearing Tony's words, the corner of Nick's mouth twitched, and he wisely decided not to talk to him anymore. Turning his gaze to Aurora behind him, Nick forced a smile on his face and said softly, Miss Aurora, S.H.I.E.L.D. welcomes you. Thank you, Director Nick. Hearing Nick's words, Aurora nodded lightly, then he said straight to the point, I hope that S.H.I.E.L.D. will not give you a good rest. Some jobs I can't take. Sighing lightly, Nick nodded helplessly, and responded, Yes. After the words fell, Nick also set his sights on Banner at the end, Dr. Banner. Needless to say, without letting Nick speak out, Banner frowned, and said directly, I can leave after this matter is over. Then start working quickly. Bosom. Okay. After a long silence, Nick finally nodded helplessly. Now that a team consisting of super warriors has been established, it is necessary to accept the different personalities of these people. Nick has already made corresponding psychological preparations for this kind of thing. Turning his head and looking to the right side of the main console, Nick said directly, we monitor every wireless camera, mobile phone, and laptop on the planet, as long as they are connected to the internet. Will be our goal. Monitoring every wireless camera. Hearing Nick's words, Jones narrowed his eyes, and there was a trace of coldness in his eyes, Although the circumstances are excusable, this kind of behavior is still so annoying. Hate it. Unaware of the change in Jones' eyes, Nick sighed lightly, and continued, however, there is still no way to find them in time. Then we need to narrow down the search scope. Hearing Nick's words, Banner narrowed his eyes, and said directly, how many spectrometers can you find? Get them all and put them on the top. 
Then adjust them all to gamma rays. I will design an algorithm that can identify the source, so that at least we can filter out 967 places. Having said that, Banner paused for a moment, then turned his head and looked into Nick's eyes. Aren't you going to find me a place to work? Definitely yes. Hearing Banner's words, Nick nodded lightly. I think you will be satisfied, there is everything there. Tony. Hearing the conversation between Nick and Banner, Jones turned his head to look at Tony, narrowed his eyes, and said softly, what do you think? How can I see it? Looking over Nick, Tony said softly, the tesseract materials they gave us are not useful at all. I don't believe they don't have any research on tesseract, but he didn't show those research it. Nick doesn't trust us at all, otherwise, just take out a tesseract research, and the difficulty for us to find tesseract will be reduced. Agfei, well, it doesn't matter, anyway, I have already started and I don't count on people from S.H.I.E.L.D. Hearing Tony's words, Jones nodded lightly, but I admire Dr. Banner, his acting skills are at least at the actor level. Cut. Hearing what Jones said, Tony twitched his mouth and couldn't help but say, you're not bad either. Two days later, the S.H.I.E.L.D. control room. There was no gain for two days, and the eagerness of a group of Avengers was wiped out a lot. None of them are professional agents, and even Jones felt a little anxious after a long time without Harvest. Definitely. Natasha Romanoff and Steve are exceptions. One of these two is a top agent, and the other is one of the most outstanding soldiers. Two days of waiting is not enough to dampen their enthusiasm. Surrounded by a group of busy S.H.I.E.L.D. agents, Jones couldn't help but open his clairvoyant eyes and look towards the deck of the helicarrier. After a while, Jones narrowed his eyes and couldn't help but whispered to Tony beside him, Tony, you said that if this space carrier is transformed into a device that absorbs sunlight, will it be much more efficient than the Stark building? Quote. Considering the area and height, the amount of light and intensity of this thing is indeed much more than that of the Stark building. Hearing what Jones said, Tony twitched his mouth and couldn't help but scolded with a smile. But, why don't you said to transform the Earth into a device for you to absorb sunlight? Earth. Glancing sideways at Tony, Jones frowned, and said calmly, if you have that kind of technology, I agree 100%. You. Hearing Jones' words, Tony's expression froze, and he was silent for a long time before finally yelling softly. Get out. Ha ha. Seeing Tony's appearance, Jones laughed and was about to say something, but when Helmy waited for him to speak, there was a soft sound from the console. The next moment, an agent directly shouted, the clue has been found. The matching rate has reached 67%. Wait, after cross comparison, the matching rate is 79%. Found it. Hearing this person's words, Phil Coulson on the side was taken aback, and walked directly to the console, where is the location? Stuttgart, Germany, Kuningstrasse 28. He has no intention of hiding. Captain. Hearing what this person said, Nick, who was talking to Steve on the other side, couldn't help turning his gaze to Steve on the side, it's up to you. Well, hearing Tony's words, Steve nodded slightly, and was about to say something. However, before Steve could open his mouth, a clanging mechanical crash sounded directly from the other side. Hearing this voice, Steve and the beam subconsciously turned their gazes to where the voice sounded on the other side. But when the two looked away, they stayed on the spot. I don't know when, Jones has already taken out his and Tony's steel armor, and when Steve's eyes turned around, Jones and he even put on the steel armor directly. Standing in the control room are two sets of armor, one gold and one red, one silver and black, looking indescribably handsome. Director Nick, maybe you should give us a flight out. Steel armor is very fast, but it took almost two hours to travel from the United States to Germany. When Jones and Tony arrived in Stuttgart, Germany, half of Kooning Avenue had been blocked by Loki, and everyone was forced to squat on the ground to listen to Loki's declaration. What a stinking guy. Looking through the armor's telephoto system, looking at Loki with a high-spirited face a few streets away, Tony twitched his lips and couldn't help but say, Jones, what do you think of me? Is it cool to go out? How about some music? Good idea. Hearing Tony's words, Jones twitched his lips, and said calmly, playing the music, directly hitting the enemy with an energy cannon, and then landing as a savior, what do you think? Good idea. Upon hearing Jones' words, Tony's eyes lit up, and he shouted directly, J-A-R-V-I-S, 
I remember that the place Loki went to was a party, right? Hack their operating system. Play me a gasoline. Okay sir. Hearing Tony's words, J-A-R-V-I-S responded directly, and then the sound of music faintly entered Jones' ears. Tony. Jones was taken aback when he heard this voice, and couldn't help showing a look of surprise on his face. What are you doing? I just said it casually. I didn't listen to it later. Hearing what Jones said, Tony smiled and said directly, to be honest, the sound quality of the party speakers is not bad. Right. Quote dot dot dot. Not bad. Hearing what Jones said, the corner of Jones' mouth twitched, not knowing what to say at all. A thought flashed through his mind, and a strange look suddenly appeared on Jones' face. Glancing sideways at Tony beside him, Jones yelled directly, Tony follow closely. What? Hearing what Jones said, Tony, who was planning how to appear handsomely, was stunned, and a look of doubt appeared on his face. What do you mean? It means. I'm going to speed up. As the voice fell, the injectors on Jones' hands and feet increased their output instantly, causing a loud noise in the air, and the whole person jumped out instantly. Jones. Seeing Jones' action, Tony was startled, and subconsciously exclaimed, You fool. J-A-R-V-I-S, hurry up and speed up. Sir. Hearing Tony's words, J-A-R-V-I-S said directly, I'm sorry, Mark VI has too many more weapons than Mr. Jones's armor so it is impossible to surpass Mr. Jones in terms of speed. Speaking of this, J-A-R-V-I-S paused slightly, and continued, Sir, according to the thoughts you may have, I would like to make a suggestion. Don't dismantle the weapons on the Malta. Shut up. Hearing J-A-R-V-I-S's words, Tony yelled lightly, but there was a sense of guilt in his tone of being guessed. Hearing the conversation between Tony and J-A-R-V-I-S, Jones chuckled, but didn't show any intention of slowing down. A few seconds later, Jones fell from the sky with a, coax, sound, and directly aimed his gaze at the astonished Loki in front of him. Hey, what did I see? A Tauran warrior. Really? Hearing what Jones said, Loki sneered, and said directly, I don't know what you saw, but I only saw ten rich men who show off. Dude, maybe I should warn you, you got the wrong guy. As Loki's voice fell, Tony's voice suddenly sounded from midair, and the next moment, Tony, who was driving the Mark VI, landed on Jones' side with his signature movements. Quickly standing up straight, Tony couldn't help complaining to Jones on the side, to be honest, Jones. I, think your behavior just now is very rude. Really. Then I apologize to you. The corner of his mouth twitched, and Jones took off the steel armor on his body. Now the steel armor is useless to Jones except to go on the road. Wearing the steel armor to fight is still exhausted. Clenching his fist lightly, Jones turned his gaze directly to Loki in front of him. Mr. Torin, are you ready to surrender? Hearing Jones' words, Loki's face froze, and a cold look appeared in his eyes. Didn't anyone tell you? When threatening others, it's best to point a cannon at them. So you're not ready to surrender. Hearing Loki's words, Jones frowned, and couldn't help saying. Then you have to get ready. The cannons are coming. As the sound fell, Jones took a sudden step, and rushed directly towards Loki, the powerful testes in the eyes even cracked the concrete floor under Jones's feet. Hiss. Seeing Jones' actions, Loki's pupils shrank, and a look of surprise could not help showing in his eyes, and subconsciously raised the long stick in his hand, and directly blocked it in front of his chest. Clang. The moment Loki completed the movement, Jones rushed in front of him, and his fist hit Loki's staff, making a sound like metal clashing, and Loki was directly crushed by Jones. Powerful force to fly out three. Getting up from the ground in embarrassment, Loki glanced at the indifferent Jones in front of him, and couldn't help showing a look of surprise in his eyes, the information never said that you are so strong. The intelligence never said you were so weak. Hearing Loki's words, Jones' eyes widened, and a hint of sarcasm appeared on his face. After the words fell, Jones turned his gaze slightly, and looked directly at Tony behind him. I said, aren't you going to do something? It's not your style to stand and watch a show. I have no plans. Hearing what Jones said, Tony shook his head and said loudly, or. I'm not going to accept your, 503, apology. It's too insincere. Quote dot dot dot. Okay. 
Hearing Tony's words, the corner of Joan's mouth twitched, and a trace of helplessness appeared on his face. Anyway, I can solve this guy myself. After the words fell, Jones rushed out of the spot in an instant, and attacked Loki in front again. I won't hit the same move twice. Seeing Jones' movement, Loki roared, and instantly pointed the staff in his hand at Jones, and a beam of energy shot directly at Jones. I won't be hit by such a simple attack. Hearing Loki's words, Jones sneered, and the kaleidoscope Sharingan in his eyes turned, and Loki's energy light passed directly through Jones' body. At this time, Jones had already rushed in front of Loki. The next moment, only a bang was heard, and Jones' fist slammed into Loki's face firmly, sending Loki flying out again. Hey, Jones. After smashing Loki into the air, Tony's voice suddenly sounded from behind Jones. I said. When you do this again, can you say it first? Huh. Hearing this voice, Jones was taken aback, and couldn't help turning his head to look behind him. At this glance, Jones almost burst out laughing, only to see that at the moment Tony was lying on the ground, ready to get up in embarrassment. The attack that Jones dodged just now, Yuanren directly hit Tony who was watching the show behind. It's better to stay away from the theater. Holding a smile and glancing at Tony, Jones narrowed his eyes and said directly, I don't guarantee that I won't accidentally hurt you. Okay. Hearing what Jones said, Tony nodded slightly, and was about to say something. But the next moment, Tony choked back what he hadn't said yet, and turned into a loud shout, be careful. As Tony's voice fell, Loki's long staff passed through Jones' body directly, and hit the ground hard, directly hitting the ground with a big hole. I've always been careful. With a slight twitch of his mouth, Jones turned around and punched Loki in the face. Seeing Jones' movement, Loki narrowed his eyes, and instantly stretched out his left hand holding the long staff, grabbing Jones' fist in his hand. Staring straight into Jones' eyes, Loki chuckled and said coldly, you can't maintain that state when you attack. I'm right. Speaking of this, Loki paused slightly, and couldn't help but have a smug look on his face. I admit that you are very strong, and even most of the warriors of God's domain are not as powerful as you. But compared to me, you it's still worse. Am I worse than you? Hearing Loki's words, Jones twitched his mouth, but suddenly there was a mocking look in his eyes. Mr. Loki, I don't know if anyone has taught you. Don't just stare at others' eyes. What do you mean? Hearing what Jones said, Loki was taken aback for a moment, and before he could react, he suddenly saw a deep red light in Jones' eyes. The next moment, two scorching rays shot out from Jones' eyes, and instantly hit Loki's head. The powerful impact directly sent Loki flying out. It hit a pool king next to the street. Hey. Seeing this scene, Tony was taken aback for a moment, and rushed to Jones directly. I said, you won't beat him to death right away. Don't worry. Hearing Tony's words, Jones narrowed his eyes, and looked in the direction Loki flew out. I'm aiming at his helmet, it's okay. Really. Hearing what Jones said, he nodded slightly, but his face still had a worried look on his face. He had seen the power of Jones' heat rays before, so why did the thin layer of protection on Loki's head it doesn't look like it can be blocked. But soon, Loki, who slowly crawled out of the pool 1.2, dispelled the thoughts in Tony's mind. Staring straight at the undamaged helmet on Loki's head, Tujong couldn't help but said, Jones, can that thing be my trophy? Then you should ask him. Hearing Tony's words, Jones narrowed his eyes, and turned his gaze directly to Loki who had just climbed out of the pool. Mr. Loki. Let me ask you again, are you ready to surrender? While speaking, Jones' eyes slowly glowed red. And as Jones' voice sounded, bursts of roaring planes sounded directly from above. Looking up at the fighter jets in the sky, Loki twitched his lips, put down the scepter in his hand, and slowly raised his hands. Then, with a flash of golden light, Loki's clothes returned to normal, definitely, and his funny helmet disappeared together. Hey. Seeing this scene, Tony was taken aback, and his tone was full of surprise, why is this still possible? As he said that, Tony turned his gaze and looked directly at Jones beside him. Jones. I think you should have taken off his helmet just now. Shut up. Hearing Tony's words, Jones rolled his eyes and said directly, I'll give you a chance. Take him, we're going back. After speaking, Jones turned around and walked back. 
Taking back the steel armor he put aside into the space of Alien 06, Jones walked directly towards the fighter jet that had already landed. Ignoring Black Widow and the captain in the plane, Jones sat directly on the side, his whole brow furrowed. Jones is struggling now. He definitely knew that Loki was being captured on his own initiative this time, although even if he knew that Loki wanted to be captured on his own initiative, it would be impossible to let him go. But Jones didn't care about that. In the original book, Loki has never shown his strength. Except for good eloquence and wisdom, Loki has never shown much. And in terms of fighting, the only thing he showed worth was probably the fighting skills that could torture Steve. However, when he fought Loki just now, Jones didn't feel at all how brilliant Loki's fighting skills are. Moreover, from some demonstrations of Loki's other skills, it can also be clearly seen that his strength is not as weak as it appears. That is to say, when he was fighting with himself just now, Loki still didn't use his full strength. He still had the same plan as in the original book, to fight with water and then surrender. Thinking of this, Jones couldn't help frowning. As Loki was brought into the cockpit, the plane also took off slowly, and flew in the direction of the shield helicarrier. And at this time, Steve, who followed the plane for nothing and didn't even show his face, also noticed Jones' abnormality. Jones. Stepping up to Jones, Steve couldn't help showing a puzzled look on his face, what's the matter? Don't you look very happy? Definitely not happy. Nodded lightly, Jones didn't intend to continue talking to Steve, Jones responded, then got up and quickly sat opposite Loki. What? Seeing Jones' actions, Loki chuckled, and looked directly into Jones's eyes, is there anything you want to say to me? Or show off in front of the enemy? Loki. Hearing Loki's words, Jones twitched the corner of his mouth, and his face could be said to be extremely serious. I have no intention of showing off, but if you want to report on your strength, I will be very serious. Happy. Hearing Jones' words, Loki's pupils shrank, and the playful expression on his face also restrained a bit. I don't quite understand what you are talking about. It's a very simple question. Jones narrowed his eyes and said without any hesitation. Your clothes, scepter, don't tell me it's an illusion. The things produced by illusion have no substance. I don't know. I feel, the clothes made by illusion will have such a real touch, and the scepter made by illusion can be long or short. I don't even think, a helmet made by illusion can resist my attack. It's really some short answer questions. Hearing what Jones said, Loki raised the corner of his mouth, and a strange smile appeared on his face. It's just some simple magic, black magic, arcane magic, and some simple use of space. Speaking of this, Loki paused slightly, and the smile on his face became even more mysterious. You also control the ability of space, don't you? That ability is three times stronger than mine. Black magic, arcane magic, use of space. Hearing Loki's words, Jones' pupils shrank 383, and an inexplicable smile appeared on his face. Loki, in my opinion, you have surpassed Thor up. Really. Hearing what Jones said, Loki's eyes turned cold, and he said in a cold sweat, I don't think this is a compliment. You've been going in the wrong direction. Jones narrowed his eyes when he heard Loki's words, but didn't say anything further. Loki himself once said that since he was a child, he has always lived in Loki's shadow. As the two sons of the king of god Odin, Loki and Thor have been compared indistinctly since childhood. But Loki was originally from the Frost Titan family, and was still a relatively weak Frost Titan from the constitution, so Loki has always been overwhelmed by Thor. But this is because Loki has been comparing himself and Thor in the direction he is good at, comparing fighting, bravery, being favored by Odin, and being loved by the gods. How can Loki compare to Thor? Loki didn't realize that, better than magic, better than strategy, better than wisdom. He can perfectly suppress Thor in everything. Thanks for watching, please subscribe and support our channel.